Bonaparte's restaurant is in dire straits. New owner Sure has sunk everything into it. It's frustrating the hell out of me at the moment because I'm going nowhere. The customers are nowhere to be seen. How many's booked? None garden. Nothing at all. No. Chances of walk-ins, perhaps? Slim. The kitchen's down to two staff. And the money has nearly run out. I'm going in to identify the problems. I'll find out if the market's there. How much do you pay for that? Well, I'm not pay a lot, would you? <laughs> If the team are pulling together... You take a fucking penalty. ..and if the head chef is clued up enough. You're taking the piss, you know that. I've got just one week to turn this restaurant into a viable business. The honeymoon's over. Got to start making profit now. Next to its posh neighbours, Ilkley and Skipton, sits Silsden. A little working-class town yet to make its mark on the culinary map of Britain. Lots of um, fish bars, cafes, quite a quaint little place, a little small Yorkshire town. Bonaparte's wine bar and basement restaurant on the high street was taken over by its current owner just over a year ago. In her time, Sue Ray has sold everything from donkey rides to cavity wall insulation. But the restaurant business is totally new to her, and so far, the locals aren't biting. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Sue? It is, yes. Okay. How are you? Hi, pleased to meet you. Likewise. So, how's it going? A bit quieter today. How many are you having for lunch? About two. Two, ready? That's it. And last night? Last night, I think we did only two again. That's all. Two customers two the whole customers night? Two customers the whole night, yeah. Unfortunately, it's just died a death. Absolute death. The stark truth is that two-thirds of restaurants don't survive past their first birthday. And as things stand, Sue's in danger of adding to those statistics. As a last resort, she's placed all her trust in a 21-year-old head chef. Together, they believe that fine dining will guarantee Bonaparte's a brighter future. It's like being an artist, you know what I mean? You just start from, from nothing and create something. So I think that's why I love being a chef. From a humble start five years ago washing dishes, Tim has had a meteoric rise. Obviously, I would like a, f a couple of restaurants, maybe three, being Leeds and London, New York, you know, wherever, just big cities, you know, so that, that's my main ambition, and obviously to make a lot of money. Tim's ultimate dream is to become a TV chef. You put Parmesan through this, chef. But for now, he's embracing his first Ooh, opportunity yeah. to run his own kitchen. And how did you find Tim? Uh, he found me. Um, he knew I'd been struggling with chefs and uh, lack of them. Mm. And he's very ambitious. He must be fucking good if he's a head chef at 21, though. <laughs> no? Either that or he's a fucking good bullshitter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tim. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Likewise. And? Just pleasure, Lee. Lee. Uh, so you're the head chef? Yeah. And you're the... Well, you've obviously got to be the second chef. There's only two of you. <laughs> Busy lunch? No. No? Absolutely not. No one. Uh, I didn't think so. Were you standing there twiddling your thumbs? No? Sue's food takings are a dismal £200 a week. She should be clearing at least ten times that, but she's not even covering Tim's wages, let alone food costs and overheads. Chefs can't get excited unless there's customers to cook for. I'll never know how good they are unless there's any customers in the fucking restaurant. Uh, Tim, how many's booked? None, Garden. Nothing at all? No. no. Chances of walk-ins, perhaps? Slim. Don't want to see you under a little bit of pressure tonight. Right. It's five to six. I want you to get out on the street, go knock on a few doors, and invite some locals to dinner. Get your coats on and fuck off for some customers. Oh, that way. If the customers won't come in off their own free will, these two young chefs are going to have to go and drag them in. Excuse me. We'd like to invite you for a uh, free meal. Fine dining requires the ultimate in presentation, surroundings and service. You've just had one. Thank You've you. just had one. But most of all, it requires faultless food. We just need the people coming in now. Okay. It's like a big cake. You've got all the ingredients and you can mix it. You just got to find the right consistency to make it rise. You'll go? OK, I'll see you there. Cheers. The reputation of this place can't be that great. Even with free food from the fine dining menu on offer, they've only managed to pull in 11 guests. For any head chef, this would be a walk in the park. First order, two pigeon, main course, one venison, one brew. Where do the tickets go? Um, well, I just put them there because we never really get enough to worry about it. Oh, fuck me. That's nice. <laughs> Who's doing what? Who's doing the fish? I'll do the fish. And what would you like to do tonight? 
Uh, I'll do venison. What I'm trying to say is, how the fuck do you organise your kitchen? Oh, well, Lee, you take care of the hot starters, I'll do the cold starters, you do the fish, I'll do the meat. We well, jump onto the puddings together. Here, then. Lee will stand here and I'll do this one. Right. And then just, when, when I'm not doing anything, then I'll just jump on and help him out. You know how to organise? Within reason. Within reason, OK, here we go. Where did you put red bard, Lee? With the first orders in, now I can really see what's going on in the kitchen. What was that? Oh, I just trashed a load of balls. You better send the bread first, don't you? Yeah, I'll just put it yeah. Never mind fine dining. They can't even get the bread right. It's fucking oh, frozen. Right. Get it back in the oven. Are the pigeons ready? Yes. We're about to put them in the bin because the bread's frozen, pigeons are cooked, and the fucking... Bread's not even out there. And if you toss that fucking cabbage once more, I'm going to ram up your ass, OK? Yeah. <laughs> Can we...? Yeah. yeah, everything you turn around in. Yeah, let's go. Come on. Even when the kitchen's busy, you should be looking to get the starters out within ten minutes of receiving the order. Thank you very much. These poor souls have waited half an hour for their pigeon breast with mushroom ravioli. And that's not the only problem. Tim, you made a ravioli? Yes. It's burnt. Do you right. not taste that, man? No. Smell it, then. You honestly can't taste that burn. But now, now you point it out, yeah. Get that shit in the bin. This is really worrying. A head chef who can't even taste his own food's burnt. He's not going to win any prizes for his control of the kitchen, either. And there's only two of them in here. Oh, well, it's one leak from chair. I need an egg for... OK, can you hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you hear Hold on, hold on, come here. They're Bed buzzing. Bed. They're buzzing in the background. That's the veg in the microwave that should have gone with the main course four minutes ago. Get the fucking things out. For some, an hour's wait is just too much. Desperate to keep her staff costs down, Sue has got her hands full running the bar upstairs and seems blissfully unaware of the farce that's taking place in the basement. Kitchen's a disaster. A disaster beyond belief. The blind leading the blind, and the left arm not knowing what the right arm's doing, and you want 50, 60 seats filled down there, and they've got 11 customers in for dinner and up to their eyeballs in shitter. I mean, real shit. Everything's going in these cutters. For some bizarre reason, they think that rings is the sort of ultimate fine dining experience, but I don't understand what, what the hell's going on there. I don't know. All I know is I'm not making money. So I don't know what they're at or where they're coming from. But it's Sue's business, and she should be in charge. Look at the fucking mess. Huh? I've never seen such hard work for 11 guests. No. Hmm? Doesn't make you feel good, does it? No, not really. I've got just one week to make a constructive impact on Bonaparte. But by day two, I'm clutching at straws to find any positives to build on. Sue lacks focus and has clearly lost control. The kitchen's such a tip, it's a health hazard. And worst of all, the head chef and his mate just aren't up to scratch. I must be missing something. Um, gentlemen, Tim, sing the dish. Scallops. Scallops. Can't wait to see it. Nearly every successful restaurant has a dish that it's renowned for. I'm hoping that by cooking his, Tim will produce something truly memorable, something truly worthy of a place on a fine dining menu. That's your signature dish, which is? Um, scallops with uh, deep fried parmesan and black pudding and sauce hollandaise. Mm -hmm. Certainly looks okay. What do you think? Mm. <laughs> it's got to be sick. <laughs> <laughs> He's only gone and given me a rancid scallop. Will someone get him a drink? Fuck I'm drinking. Shit. With. How can you eat that? Oh. If you knew they were off, I didn't. why didn't you say? No, I didn't. I didn't know they were off. They're fucking minging. Do you not taste that? I do now, yeah. It took a while to now. <coughs> <coughs> I know what it means. I feel sick myself now. It's, um... It's grim. It's fucking grim. And it's out of order. Well, I didn't realise they were fucking off. So, I suppose it's my fault, really. 
I could kill someone. That's the bottom line. In the two days I've spent at Bonaparte's, I've witnessed total incompetence in the kitchen, total lack of direction for the management, and last but not least, they've tried their best to kill me with a rotten scallop. What the fuck are you playing at? Sorry, Chef. Well, it's not about being fucking sorry. You shouldn't be in a fucking kitchen if you don't know what's right and what's wrong in that sense. I mean, this is basic fucking cooking, you know that? I need to check if there's any more surprises lurking in Tim's kitchen. There's a look in here. When are they from? Uh, Saturday. Saturday? Would you use them today? No. No, so what the fuck are they doing in the fridge? Uh, it looks like rabbit shit, that one. That's just some lentils. Oh. This one's stuck to the fucking glass. Yeah, it looks like sheep's turd that's been infested with ants. We've got fucking fur on fucking potatoes. When's that from? I can't tell you. What are we doing with them? Throw them in bin. Throw them in bin. But you keep them in the fridge for two days before you throw them in bin. Um, no, but do you, do you see what I'm trying to get at? Yeah. Does it make fucking sense? No, yes or no? No. no. So all this fucking fridge is jam-packed with shit, and we're standing here saying, I'm going to put them in bin. I'm going to put them in bin. Well, get them in the fucking bin! This whole kitchen is disgustingly filthy. In allowing things to fester, Tim's putting Sue's business at risk. Fuck it, Can we get that one cleaned out as well, yeah? Yes. Just one bad thing can contaminate a whole fridge. Tim may as well just chuck money out the window. A health inspector would have a field day. Do you know what? I'm fucking gobsmacked. You know that? I've got a good fucking mind to get hold of fucking Sue and just tell her to fucking close the place for me. You know that? Because this is the fucking pits. You should be ashamed. Rock bottom. I've never seen anything like this in my entire fucking life. You know that? Because this is a fucking embarrassment to catering. Let alone fucking ringed out fine dining. Let's move her. Not the best start it could have been, were it? To be honest. Fucking, like, it's all right, you know, I'll sort it out. The picture's becoming painfully clear. Tim's completely unqualified to do this job. He's blagged his way in, and Sue's been naive enough to take him on. When you do put so much, like, hard work into creating stuff and then you don't, you don't use it, you, then you get bored. That's what I've done. Like footballers playing with no football in it, they just run around. What's the point? They'll sit on their asses after a while, won't they? That's how it is. All this ingredients in there, and, and, and no customers to send it to, and yet none of them have been communicating with each other. You know, that's got to go tomorrow. Can we turn that into a fish pie? Can we do something with it? But no, the blind leading the blind, mm. and every bloody ingredient in that fridge um, is, is, is money, your money. Mm. Sue has no idea what's going on in her own kitchen. Key to any successful restaurant is regular communication between management and the head chef. I really need to get these two talking. Everyone just had a word with me and said uh, she's not very impressed. We need to keep the place clean and everything tidy, otherwise I can be sued. In which case I'm out of business and you're out of a job. Realise I'd, that. Yeah, I know, and I've taken it, have to take it on board as well. Well. You know, I just you have to stick her R in. She wasn't going to say, I told you so, but that's what she was doing. Yeah? Fair enough. She had the little dig, so what the fuck her? You know what I mean? Relations between Tim and Sue clearly aren't healthy. Lee? Yeah? Goggles? Gloves? Before we do any fucking cooking in here now, I want the place absolutely spotless. Goggles on, please. That's it, show me, you handsome bastard. It's not just the kitchen that's at fault here. Any clued-up restaurateur knows it's damn stupid to attempt fine dining in a basement, let alone one that's beneath a busy bar. Sue's panic is obvious when you see the weird mix of fine dining menus and scrappy handwritten boards advertising TV name cabarets. Bonaparte's image has clearly confused potential customers. She was trying really to think to do too many things, to be all things to all people. So she was trying to have, you know, live music and have an internet cafe. <laughs> and uh, also the impression that you got when you came in was she'd be shuffling around in her leggings and her slippers. 
I don't think she's going to attract the, the people that she wants to attract. It's not as nice as the one that's opened across the road. The newly opened competition just 200 yards away has been fully booked since it opened, so the pundits are definitely out there. It's time to find a clear identity for Bonaparte and make a clean start. Valentine's night is just four days away. It's one of the most important nights of the Russian calendar, and it can make or break a new venture. If we're going to reinvent Bonaparte's image, we've got to do it now. But will Sue accept the drastic change of direction I'm about to propose? It's clearly not going to work as a fine dining experience. Does Tim know how much pressure you're under financially? I say flippantly, you know, I'll end up going bankrupt if you're not careful, but mm. he doesn't realise how true that is. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, how close are you in real terms? In real terms, um, probably. I've got probably three months maximum. Jesus. You know, I'm, I'm willing to take constructive criticism. I mean, it's not working, is it? Otherwise, we'd have more people in. The basics are wrong. I mean, the, the basics are so, so wrong, and it's, mm. you know, it's embarrassing. It's got to go back to comfort, rustic, easy-going food. It's got to become more of a bistro, because the place mm. oozes that kind of style. I know Sue's convinced, but if I'm to flush out Tim's pretensions to fine dining once and for all, I need to provide him with evidence that he can't fail to take on board. Gentlemen, Tim. Right, this is a uh, sea and scallops with a uh, baby black pudding with a nice hollandaise cayenne pepper sauce and a bit of uh, deep fried parmesan. It looks like potato, but I'm not sure. First time you had a scallop? Mm. And this is a beef and ale pie. I love a bit of beef. I like, I'm a beef as well. Beef mm. Yeah? Beautiful. The scallops and the black pudding and the parma ham. How much do you pay for that? Well, I'm wanting to pay a lot, would you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah. Scallops are dear anyway, aren't they? So, 8 50 8 50 What, and, one portion? And what would you pay for the pie? Well, about £8. About £8. Pound. £7.95. Oh, what well, a far off. And £8.95. Well, well done. Far off, mm. yeah. Which one would you prefer? Well, I like the pie, personally. Well, I like, I like the meat. I'm definitely a meat lover. Mm. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. One nil, you fucker. <laughs> Tim needs to learn a few basic restaurant rules. If you don't know your market, you'll never get bums on seats. I would probably go with this one. Mm -hmm. Two fucking nil. Next, please. Have you got two seconds? Here's another one. Have you got two seconds? Restaurants without like customers will go bust. You don't like scallops? <laughs> Three nil, you twat. <laughs> Excuse me? Put another way, Tim needs to start producing food that people of Silsden won't be able to resist. That is gorgeous, sir. I would pay that for we're that. We're low on that. that you that. wouldn't pay 8.95 for that. In, in the major cities, yeah, I'd expect to. But that is very, Yorkshire. very reasonable and delicious. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? I am listening. Be true. That's where we're going. Yeah, fine dining. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going in for it? It's not bad news, you know that. It's fucking well, it's good, good news. news. Brilliant. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's clear, huh? The writing's on the wall. She's come to the end of the tither up there. That's pretty obvious, that. Yeah, she's, she's had enough, huh? Yeah, yeah. Is that clear? Yeah, it's clear. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, you're fucking cocky with her, you know that? Yeah. Yeah, and she pays your fucking salary. Are you mad? How much have you put in here? Nothing. Yeah, not a fucking penny. Not a single penny. But you've taken from it, haven't you? Yep. So now it's time to give back. Absolutely, definitely. And not cooking for egos, get rid of it. Back to basics, you know that. What I want you two to do, just to confirm that we do know the basics, both at the same time, cook me a fucking omelette. Show me something that I can eat and be happy with. An omelette is probably one of the first things you learn to cook at catering college. When was the last time you cooked omelette? I haven't cooked one before. I've never cooked an omelette before. Oh, don't be stupid. I haven't. Look inside. What does that tell you? Um, slightly overcooked. Slightly? It tastes like fucking rubber. I'm both overcooked. That was shit, by any standard. You were a head chef. You're taking the piss, you know that.
You are taking the piss, you know that? Yes, Carlin. Gives you nothing back. And the whole idea of telling him off is to sort of help train him and educate him, but clearly not used to being told what to do. Right, make me another omelette. Fuck it, let's go. Any chef worth his salt should be able to source good quality ingredients at a good price. The locals already think Bonaparte's is too expensive. They want value for money. For Sue to start making any sort of profit, Tim needs to be clever about what he buys. Can I have two uh, bacon sandwiches, please? And two cups of tea. He needs to wake up to the real world. He's clearly in need of some inspiration for his new bistro-style menu. Thanks, Danny. Thank you. That, that's your one, that one. Don't spill it on those new trainers, will you? No, try not to. The Chinese tongues. Tonight, we've got a table of four in. I want you, OK, to buy starter, main course and pudding. 20 quid. Five quid per head. Right. I want to see how clever you are with that money. Right. Um, Morning. Morning. Come on in, love. I'm making French onion soup. Right, we're making some um, French onion soup today, so uh, we're looking for some like sort of rustic like baguettes. Well, all we're doing is baguette here in this window. That's it. Nice Can I have? Can have a look at that. Clearly, Tim's never bought anything from a market before in his life. Yeah, never discount for the trade? Any discount for the trade? Any uh, discount for the trade? Well, I'm half. I'm It's always worth buying before you know that. Yeah. So when you're on the telephone in the morning, you're checking with your suppliers and you want to know how much the fish is, you can always bargain with them. I bet you don't treat Sue's money this way, do you? I will do from now on. Fucking right, you will. Tim's menus are packed with expensive fish and meat cuts. He needs to open his eyes to the tasty, less expensive options on offer. Yeah. What's that next to the pig's head? What is that there? Um, That's oxtail. Oxtail. You ever used oxtail before? No. What would you do with a brazen steak? I don't know, really. Maybe barbecue. Be oh. Quite nice on barbecue, you know, when she gets them going outside. Brazen steak means fucking brazen. So it's telling you what to do with it. So what would you do with it? Braise it. Like a stew. Yeah. Can't put that on the fucking barbecue. Just looking for some chicken breasts. Some nice chicken breasts, yep. There you go, look, he's nice showing you. It's nice. Check it. Let's have a look. How much is it? How much is chicken per breast? Yes, that was it. One pound twelve there. It's a lot How less than that? I get it from my butcher. Is it? Your butcher's more expensive? Yeah. Jesus. Four of them, please. Any uh, discount for trade? Discount for trade. How much was it? Four pound twelve. Awkward. That's my boy. Lovely. That was it for me. Cheers. Thank Can you. I have a bill, please? Uh, uh, a receipt. With the AT. <coughs> With the AT. You'd come again, yeah? Absolutely. The more they see you, the more banter you have with them, yeah. the more bargains you get with them, and the cheaper it becomes, yeah, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'll definitely do Then that. the rest of it starts to make a bit of fucking money. Yeah. Get the picture? Yeah, I get it. Thank fuck for that. How much do we spend? Just over 12 quid. 12 quid, fantastic. For four portions. Brilliant. Okay. French onion soup. It costs 75 pence to make a portion. Okay. How much does it go on the menu for? Ten. You times it by four. And that should cover everything. 2 95 for a bowl of soup. And we've made money on that. And one thing we're not going to do with the ingredients we bought this morning is waste, waste anything. We waste nothing. With the Valentine's extravaganza just two days away, I'm under no illusions as to what we're up against. Fucking limp dick in the kitchen, you know that? Go get some fucking energy. You're fucking 21, for God's sake. You should be getting fucking 12 hard-ons a day. Not one a fucking month. Let's go. Lee's got a bit of nous. Right, whisk, 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 But I've got to hold whisk. Tim's hand every step of the way. Are you sure you want to be a chef? Yes. You are, yeah? In. Right into the centre. This is our one Just chance to see to if Tim can there. cope with his new yep. bistro-style food. I'm going to bring the knife out, put it back in, and bring it to the edge there. Yeah. Yeah? Yep. Gently, 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 gently. Make love to it, don't fuck it. Outside leaves. Yeah? What do we do with them? You throw them away. Yeah, we usually throw them away, okay. yeah. Off like but that. before we let them loose on the paying customers, I've asked them to cook yeah. for four special people in the privacy of their own home. What I haven't told him is for his own family. You'd like to stir it into it, or...? No, you leave it dangling on top so it gets perfect. Of course you let it fucking stir inside. We've got soup, chicken, lemon meringue pie. Yeah. Let's go and surprise Mum and Dad, shall we? Let's go round to their house and you cook 
Red tea. Okay. Cuit de jus, sauce for the chinkier. Um. I don't. I don't really. I'm know. asking I, you. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't think so. Good. The, because the center is is the sauce. The garlic oh, sauce in the center. Okay. Right. Now. <laughs> we don't need any jus. We don't need any jus. Woo! Hello, Madge. How are you? Surprise. I hate to use Tim's folks as guinea pigs, but with the three-course meal already prepared, all Tim needs to do is reheat the soup and cook the Kievs. Should we get cracking? Yeah. Where's Grandad? Grandad's, Grandad's in the front room. Hello. This should be a walkover, even for him. I'm going to leave it all to you. He was always in the kitchen as a boy, wanting really? to help bake. Because he loves talking about it, doesn't he? Yes. Yeah. But then he decided whilst he was at school that that's what he wanted to do. And he got himself a job in a kitchen. And it just went on from there. He told mm. me that he was going to be a chef and he was going to the good food show to meet Gary Rhodes. And off he went. Fantastic. Look yeah. what's happened. Yeah. <laughs> Don't burn it. Don't burn it. Here we go. Sorry, keep you waiting. That's quite all right. He's ready. I'll get Grant, I think. Let's not forget, Tim is a head chef. <coughs> Fucking hell. Whoops. You've burned my pans, have you? <laughs> I might have done half. I might have just burned them, yeah. <laughs> Last thing I said to him, don't forget your croutons. <laughs> I've managed to fuck them as well in his grand's house. Ladies first. This is some French onion soup. Thank you. Minus the croutons. What are we going to do with this numbfuck? Ah, oh, look at that. Superb. Torched on the outside and pink in the middle. As for the lemon meringue pie, you would get a better reception if you threw it at them. Tim's family wouldn't dream of criticising him, but the paying customers on Valentine's night won't be as forgiving. We've got 44 books for Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And you fucked it for four. What chance have we got for 44? I'm now starting to shit myself. It's my fourth day at Bonaparte's. Tim's first attempt at cooking a simplified bistro meal may have impressed his granny, but he and I both know the awful truth. It was a spectacular flop. You, you paid as a head chef, aren't you? Yeah. Do you think you should be a head chef? Not really. Thank fuck for that. Don't start crying. I'm not. Well, you look, you're about to fucking bubble. Uh, okay, so you're delighted with that, are you? Bookings for tomorrow night at uh, Valentine's okay, so Cabaret uh, are piling in. Saturday with the restaurant nearly booked to capacity, there. I'm trying my hardest to stay positive. That's fine, Mr Lowe. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. But with just a day to go, it'll take more than high-energy drinks for these two to pull it off. When someone's been told off, the first thing you do in a kitchen is come back at 100 mile an hour and... This guy disintegrates. Every time you tell him something, he just disappears into oblivion and loses all sense of concentration, that little short span that he has. Why don't we swap the roles around tomorrow? Why don't you become the sous chef and Lee becomes the head chef for tomorrow night? No answer. Whatever you want to do, guys. But it's your <laughs> fucking kitchen! You're supposed to say bollocks. No, I'm the fucking chef. My name's Tim Gray. It's me on the menu. No? Yes or no? Yes. Oh. Maybe it's me. I should try the softly, softly approach. We've got a big night Saturday night. It's full. Yeah. And it's the first time since you've both been here that the place is full. OK? And whilst I'm here, you're not shafting me as well at the same time. You know that. Yeah. We're going to work together. Over the next 15, 20 minutes, I want you both to think of something really simple, menu-wise. Three starters, three main courses and three puddings. What do you think, Lee? Soup? <sighs> Yeah, By passing some of the decision-making back to Tim, I'm hoping to build up his confidence and instil some pride in his food. It's hard to write a simple menu when you've had your head up your ass for so long doing, trying to make 
fancy, silly food. That's the kind of stuff we're going for, isn't it? Really? So, what have they come up with? Main courses, liver and onions, mashed potato, macaroni cheese, fish and chips, mushy peas, lamb um, shot pot. Lamb shot pot, that sounds nice. And you come up with the ideas together? Yeah, well, we'll just flick through some books and thought what, what's simple and, um, you know, basically thought what did we used to have at school, what did we like at school and... And not forgetting, where are we? Where, in Silston, in Yorkshire. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there! We're getting there! In devising this new menu, I'm aiming to take most of the pressure off Tim and Lee during service. 90% of the food can be prepared and perfected a day in advance. Let's go. See if you can show, show me you can handle two pans at once. As long as it's made well, it can't fail to be a hit with the customers. There should be 15 things going on there, all at the same time. Coordination, understanding, medium, pink, is it well done? Onions, roasted, bang. In short, Bonaparte's new bistro menu is designed to be idiot-proof. Yeah, uh, definitely identify them as vegetarians, yeah? Let's yeah. go. Come on. So far, Tim's attitude towards Sue has been that of a stroppy teenager rather than a respectful and supportive employee. I'm going to go on um, tomato soup, a rustic tomato soup, yeah? Yeah. With some little uh, cheese things. That's probably a first, he's actually come to us. I've had to run down and chase all the time. And then I need this. And then, oh, yeah, 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 it'll come later. I said, I need it now. Well, basically, spice, you just so. put them through some butter, crush them up. Today it seems a lot better. <laughs> Don't know what he's been doing to him down there, but he's certainly improving. <laughs> In the week I've been here, I've hardly seen Tim or Lee sample or season anything they've made. No wonder their tasteless food is failing to woo the customers. Everything we do in this kitchen has to be tasted. I don't care if it's a fucking bread roll, a lemon meringue pie or a chicken kiev. You have got to start tasting things. From now on, Bland is off the menu. And to teach these two a lesson they'll never forget, I'm resorting to dirty mm -hmm. tactics. You know what a medium steak tastes like, yes? Does that taste like a sirloin, T-bone steak, or is it a rump steak? A sirloin. Sirloin. It tastes like sirloin. Fuck you know. Here we go. Now for the pork. Okay. Open up. OK. Tell me whether it's medium or is that well done? Medium. And? Well done. Well done. None of you got that right. Yes? Yes. Pork. Mm. Pork and fucking oh. lamb. <laughs> Fuck it now. You don't, you don't realise until someone blindfolds you and feeds you that your palate's so non-active. Could have been worse. Could have been chicken. <laughs> then we would have looked like fucking idiots. <laughs> oh, right. shit! Sorry. Tim's Jesus had a week of non-stop grief from me. Whip, 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 whip. Put the bowl down. This boy has really tested my patience. All right, how, how do we know they're ready now? Uh, you can lift them upside down. Yeah, there you go. And I really don't know if any of it's sunk in. Well, I'd love to just get it on. <laughs> put it on. <laughs> Shit. <What>? Oh, fuck. <laughs> But with more than 40 guests expected in just over two hours' time, he'll soon be tested to his absolute limits. Oh, <laughs> I slipped. No, no, don't tell me. It was the mud. <laughs> it was the mud. <laughs> Can't even take a fucking penalty. I'll say this for Tim. He's no quitter, and I don't want to see him fail. But now he's got to prove he's master of his own kitchen. We're not leaving this as a draw, you know that? Hey, in cooking? Nobody draws, ever. One thing's for sure. Tonight, he'll either sink or swim. Whoa! Yes! <laughs> Woo! Another two upstairs? <laughs> Possibly. OK, good news, good news. Another two. So we're up to 50, 48 now. Sue's never had so many bookings. She's having to move furniture out. Right, lift. To fit more tables in. Mm. You happy with that? Chicken Kiev with roasted vine tomatoes. T-bone steak with homemade chips. Because there's so many involved for dinner, I, I wouldn't right. stall them upstairs for too long. You're really going to dump us in it yeah, big time. Right. Prawn <laughs> cocktail, three bean salad with mustard dressing. What do you think? Ooh, very 
I hardly dare say it, but this place has got a real buzz about it. There's one thing missing. What do you like on all your menus? Oh, his name's not... Ah, ah. bingo! <laughs> and where, should put, where should we put that? On the back or...? I don't my name on it. We work as a team and it's a giant effort and bistro, you know, that's it. That's the most sensible thing you said to me all fucking week, you know that. Thank you. Every decent restaurant in the country is full on Valentine's night. The competition down the road is packed to the rafters. And for once, so is Bonaparte's. In a small town like Sealsden, business thrives on word of mouth. And if tonight's a disaster, it could break Sue. I have got a fear that he will not be able to cope with the numbers. Especially when he's saying that 11's busy. I don't think so. So we'll see what he's made of. Tim has got to get this right. right two fruit upstairs, two soup, two chicken. OK, hey, six o'clock, first order's in. OK. Hello, chef. Yes. Well, what are we... Might as well give it to Scott. Scott, first order in. Hey, are we going to let the kitchen porter call out the tickets or are you going to call them out? Come on. On order, two soup, two chicken, one creme brulee, one treacle tart. We Let's go. Soup's made. Get on to boil. <laughs> Scotty, put some water in it. <laughs> Please. Something's burning. What's that burning? It's just on the air. It's on the grill thing. It's not the croutons, eh? No, it's not the crouton. Don't burn the croutons. I'm not burning croutons. Your soup's on, yeah? Yeah. Pan on for the chicken? Not yet. No, I think we should put the pan on first, yeah? Start the chicken, and as they're eating the soup, the chicken's cooking, yeah? Are you all right, yeah? Yeah, yeah First I'm order fine. in, it's I'm upstairs, okay. you're okay. Well, you, the pan's not on for the chicken, yeah? Don't burn the croutons. Okay? All right, how long for that soup? Five minutes. 45 seconds. I'll oh, fuck off, will you? Hey, what the fuck are you doing? Out of the way. Young man. What are you doing? Slow down. Talk to him. Lee, can you send the two soup, please? Wait. Look at the croutons. Charcoal again. Oh, God, it's the first fucking order. What's the matter? Nothing. No, well, you're, you're, you're cooking like an absolute twat. You know that. Yeah? Just take your time. <sighs> Big deep breath and talk to Lee a little bit. You're just on your own, spinning round, round and round, and just creating a fucking bedlam, yeah? Calm down, get yourself organised, yeah? And control yourself. Yeah. Now, fucking come back to me a little bit. Come back to me a bit, yes? I'm back. Fucking... Go on, Timmy. Fresh start, or we're gonna go down like a sack of shit. That's better, Lee. Look at him, look. Hey, nice and bright. Give us a smile. Hey. It's well done, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, come on, get in. Teamwork. Two minutes for some veg, Lee. Scotty, can I have two ovals out of there, mate, please? On order, three prawn cocktail, one soup, one sirloin medium, one T-bone medium, one sirloin medium. So don't rush the stars. Got a lot of stuff to get on here. Good. Communicate. Good. Scotty, as soon as you get some small ramekin, I need them. How long for veg one and a half? All sending them yet? Yeah, mate, yeah. yeah. On order, one prawns, one beans, one Kiev, one sirloin, well done, one lemon, one brulee. Right, it's got to what I can have uh, two ovals out, mate, please. Good. That's it. Now you're talking to the whole brigade now. Now you're talking to the team, which is fantastic. Yeah. Keep it going, yes? The minute you stop talking, we're going to go. We're going to go down, yeah? Yeah. Hey, it's not quite right, but at least it's moving, yeah? Yeah. Medium with salad. That's a medium on its own without salad. And that's a rare, yeah, without salad. Fuck. Keep it together, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Let's not get nervy. The food was, was excellent. Oh, it's yeah, very enjoyable. It's what we expected to have, really. It's uh, really tasty and really enjoyable. It's nice. How many more to come, please, Sue? Uh, there's another four. Four. I overbooked, actually. The local competition tonight has got 46 booked. If we do this last four, we've beaten them. 
Yeah. yeah. What does yeah? Does that not just lift the morale up a little bit? Absolutely. Yeah. Tebow, medium, 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 and a chip. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. showtime. Cabaret, I'd like to introduce Tom Sawyer, who... After prawn cocktail, get some uh, holidays on, yeah? Call cool service, please, uh, Scotty. Take it away. One T-bone steak medium and one chicken Kiev, please. And that's all going to the table. Twelve. Tell these two first, please. Put a programme together, shall we? Watch the colour look. When it's brown, it's cooked. When it's black, it's cooked. What's the pastry, please? Pies. Veg first, veg first. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Beautiful. Cheers, Bill. Cheers, Two sirloin, medium. Not finished yet, but no. yeah. Well done. <laughs> Tim's gran and granddad are celebrating their 44th wedding anniversary. At last, Tim can repay them for the rubbish he served up a couple of nights ago with a delicious, well-cooked meal. It was lovely, that steak. It was beautiful. Well, I, I yeah, yeah. yeah. It brought back memories, yeah. that Tebow steak. Did it? Yeah. Hey, you hear what granddad said? Yeah, that's brilliant. Brought yeah. back memories. Yeah. Yeah. You really surprised me tonight, and I'm really seriously over the moon that you didn't fuck it. I'm serious, sir. Yeah. Because for the first 15 minutes to 6 o'clock, you acted like the biggest twat in Britain, you know that? All over the shop, and you pulled it back together. And that wasn't me, that was you. And the feedback from them out there has been brilliant. What does that tell you? What does that, what does that put in there? I had a service like that for a long time. And these I've... stupid fucking illusions of grandeur, Gone. and all this stupid fine dining crap that you're trying to do, it's gone. Do you understand? Yeah. Exactly where you are now? Yeah, yeah. Totally understand. Do you understand what you're capable of doing yes. within this restaurant? Yes. Stop trying to take it beyond something it's never going to be. You'll fuck the restaurant and you'll fuck yourself. Big time. Mm -hmm. So never forget tonight. It's up to you now not to allow it to go back to where it was. I've been and too soft. You have to be, yeah, exactly. I'm glad you're saying it because I've been that's, too that's soft. exactly what I was going to say next. And I've also um, allowed him to have his head too much. Yeah. I also think you've been confused to what you want because you haven't been focused on one direction for the restaurant because you've been you know, Trying jumping all, things. Yeah, all over agree. the place. And I that's agree. part of a panic. Yeah. And that's wrong. And now tonight, it's clearly evident exactly what you need to do from this day onwards. And if he changes anything, I'll pickle his nuts. When I arrived at Bonaparte a month ago, it literally had no customers. Head chef Tim Gray was a liability. <coughs> well, I didn't realise you were fucking off. He couldn't even cook an omelette. You're taking the piss, you know that. In one gruelling week, we transformed Bonaparte from a failing fine dining restaurant into a buzzing bistro. <laughs> With Tim sending out quality food to nearly 50 contented customers on Valentine's night. <laughs> but since I left, Sue's given Tim two written warnings over his attitude. Now I'm back, unannounced, to find out what is going on. Turn that fucking thing off. My God. What's going on? Chilly. Chilly? It's Friday night. It's 7.30. How many's booked? Four. Four. And you got the music blaring away? Yeah, I'm just... Where's Lee? He's upstairs on bar. He's in the bar. What the fuck is that in there? Muscles. You're not serving them, are you? Yeah. What are the fridge is like? My God, oh my... What is that shit in there? There's mould and fur. Dear, oh dear, so you haven't changed, have you? Oh, fucking hell. A whole week drumming into their thick skulls, and it comes to this. Holy fuck! This is a living fucking nightmare! Nobody in this place is taking control, and in this state, a health inspector would close them down without a second thought. So I've got to show you this, because it's part of your responsibility, and this is your gaff. There you go. 
should not be in. You didn't see this, Sue? No, I didn't, actually. In fairness to Tim, he was, he was doing OK. He seemed to be OK for the first three days, and then it went. And then... This is not right. This is, this is fucking miles away. This is a nightmare, you know that? Because okay. it's more loss on top of more loss and more loss and more mould. That's what worries me, because you need to touch that, you need to rub your finger on that, you need to go to a chip, you need to season something, you put your finger in the tomato soup, and then they're all fucked. You've just contaminated the whole place, and that's what really worries me. This kitchen is not fit to cook a fucking thing in, right now. And that's your problem. I think I better just close and put due to refurbishment. And you should ban out Gracery, you know that? It's been giving him another chance and another chance. That's, that's, I can't tolerate that. It's just going to end up... Uh, well, it's professional suicide, isn't it? He's conned me. Simple as that. I don't honestly think he did it deliberately. I don't think he's a, a nasty piece of work. I just think he lives in a Walter, Walter Mitty world. I begin to think that he's just convinced himself, to be honest. To go from Valentine's Day evening to this is... It's not even funny, there's just something wrong with that. There really is. Yeah, but Valentine's Day, oh, good man. I don't think I've gone home to bed or whatever feeling in a better, happier state of mind. And tonight I don't think I could go to bed in a worse one. It's beyond recognition, really, isn't it? How fucking stupid that... That someone can be, you know what I mean? It's a dog one. And who is that someone to? Oh, well, that'll be me. Pretty much. Yeah. Well, at least the bar's busy. That is one saving grace. But really, thank God she closed that kitchen down because it was fucking disgusting. I mean, really appallingly bad. Shockingly bad. You just let me get on with it. It'd be a damn sight better. If I let you get on with it, this floor be knee-deep in SH1T. Before you rang me up, all aggressive, I were getting on with you fine, I were respecting you, and giving it all the, like, gentlemanly bloody stuff I could do, and then you went and shot it down fucking pan. No, don't turn it on me. If a floor is filthy, before I don't want to turn it on you, it doesn't matter anymore. The floor was filthy. Does it matter? Yes, I think it does. I think we've established that. Look. Yeah. Yeah? Fuck the fucking floor, that's worse. People dream of owning a restaurant in a quaint town like this, set in beautiful countryside, cooking fresh local produce, serving loyal locals as well as the tourists. A restaurant to die for, surely. But the glass house is in deep trouble. Fucking partridge, you... <sighs> Fucking all right, do our hotel, yeah? We're not losing it. Oh, for fuck's sake. Dean. No, Dean. that's them. The kitchen's in chaos, and the customers are mighty unimpressed. It was rare. The other half was just about cooked, and it was so tough, and it was really disappointing. It's losing money like there's no tomorrow, and the owner's about to crack up. I'd rather not be here. I'd burn the bloody place down. You know, better not put that on camera. He's at his wit's end. So he's called me in to turn it around. I've got just one week to do it, and that's a tall order. Garlic popcorn. I will save Neil's restaurant. I won't tolerate excuses. Last night you had bad breath. No hiding place and no bullshit. Make time, man. You're talking out your ass. I'll go anywhere. You're talking out your fucking ass. <laughs> Neil Farrell has always dreamt of owning a restaurant, but in three years since he bought the glass house, his dream has turned into a nightmare. He's deep in debt, so many people are after him for money that he's turned his mobile phone off. He could go mad, and he may even go bust. When it's your own place, and it's your own money, mm -hmm. and you're, you're the one that's, you know, or yeah. walking the tightrope. Yeah. It's, 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 very, it's very different. Yeah. And that's my problem, yeah. that we haven't, we haven't worked out which road we're taking. No, no, sure. okay. At least he's had the sense to call me in for help. <laughs> but if Neil's going to pull this one out of the fire, he's got to take some tough decisions. <laughs> I can't do that for him.
but of course I can encourage him. First stop, the kitchen, to see if the chefs know what they're doing. The head chef's 37 like me. He trained at Claridge's before my time. He's on 25 grand a year, so he'd better be good. About the same amount as you did uh, the other day. Until he says I can call him Gordon, he's Mr. Ramsey. Harry Ramsden? He, he thinks that there might be some confusion with Harry Ramsden's. First, I need to watch him cook and see how he runs his kitchen. Everyone's nervous that they're going to call him Mr. Ramsden. <laughs> Morning. Mr. Ramsey, extremely pleased to meet you. Likewise. First name? Richard. Richard. Where do you think it's going wrong? It's a very Truthfully. difficult question. We've been a bit ahead against many a time. What we're doing wrong is should we turn it, turn it into a pizzeria? Is that what people want? It's got to the stage now where I just feel it ain't working and I'm questioning my ability. To control his team and inspire them, the head chef's got to believe in himself. Ready? Otherwise, cloths, forget it. Two cloths. Check, Caesar salad, battered salmon. <laughs> Hello. Check, soup, no communication. A Not a dicky follow. bird. No one even answers the head chef. No, no fucking Bad feedback. No, no, we chef. No. Nothing. I have to ask for it. Oh, you have to ask for it? Nine times out of ten. Craig, you're not lost for words, are you? No, not at all. Big hard man I'll like say you. We are in. How's it going? Time to test Richard's cooking. I thought what would be a nice thing to do, um, just for today, was to go upstairs and have a quick bite to eat. For yourself, too. Yeah, just in your hands. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna cook for me. You choose your favourites, your specialities. Yeah. I want three duck cake pudding in. He's no, not no. having those, he's having four fresh ones. Yeah, no, no, no. Of which he's going to eat two. Richard's proud of his duck cakes with chilli jam. Exotic? No. Pretentious crap. They look like Scotch eggs. <laughs> Big <laughs> camera's bollocks. <laughs> and someone's been very lazy in the kitchen. Because I've got a bloody bone. Mm. Mm. So, I'll save that one for later. <laughs> Another of his favourite combos, braised lamb shank with parsnip crisps. It's very clumsy. Clumsy cooking and lazy elements. The oil on these stink. But it has been changed about three or four weeks. The whole meal would set you back nearly 30 quid. Way too much. Here guys. The food was disappointing. Sadly, I did choke, obviously, sod's law, but that was um, stuck at the back of my throat. But however, you know, I'm glad it was me, not a paying customer. A restaurant owner's best investment will always be in the chef. And if you haven't got that sort of major asset downstairs in the kitchen, then forget it. The guy's got to be a motivator, he's got to be a leader, he's got to make you money, he's got to bring customers back. And clearly, from what I've seen so far, Neil hasn't got that in Richard. That's pretty obvious. Next job, to see how Richard runs his brigade on a busy night. Good head chefs get the best out of their team, no matter what. Ian was a waiter but got bored serving food, so now he's trying to cook it instead. Ian's girlfriend, Claire, only works here part-time, as the main job is running a bookshop. I suspect she's only here because she's going out with Ian. Got wild animals, I didn't nibble that it, but nothing. Randall. The kitchen porter thinks we're related because we're both from Scotland. Bollocks. Richard, can you taste this? Yeah. Craig? Craig's in year two at Catering College. He looks pretty clueless to me, but let's hope he proves me wrong. A good team will always turn out good food, in, whatever please. the pressure. Three it's one of the busiest nights of the year, Saturday at half term. So it's a perfect test. What is that? That's there are 106 a customers booked. A if they're happy, they'll spend an average of 30 quid each, plus wine. And the glass house will take over four grand. But their biggest problem is coping with lots of orders. Uh, fucking dumb fucks upstairs are up. That's what's with their arse. It's a second fucking call away from non-existent table. Oh, well. Well, the kitchen. Neil did tell me, when the pressure's intense, the kitchen collapses into chaos. And you know what? It's true. Someone answer me, someone have a look in the oven. He ends up giving meals away. Things soon go from bad to very ugly. No, it's not fucking all right. Do our hotel, yeah? Wow. Well, 
bit of fat. So I said it was horrible. It hasn't been trimmed. Fat, fat, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Take it to Richard. Jay, get on the phone now. Find out where this fish was going. The whole thing's gone pear shaped. Everyone's running around like headless chickens. Um, eye off the ball and um, just a massive breakdown in communication. Fucking partridge, you've. Oh. I need a bigger piece of sea bass doing. We have a side door that, that's gone up and needs to come back and that needs to be cooked some more. Do you want this fucking partridge yeah. cooking that's more? Sweet. For fuck's sake. I need yeah. another partridge, Claire. Randall, have you just been reading the right check? It's really grim. My apologies, Chef. 36 have had their status. We've had the order in for 40 minutes? Yes. I'm glad, I would say. That's not good enough. Where's that big check? Where's the big check? You break your fucking balls and you really go for it. Yeah. And do you know what? No fucking why. Restaurant rescue. I'll tell you how you can rescue me in a restaurant. You fucking buy it off me. You fucking buy it off me, mate. Then you'll do me the biggest fucking favour you could. <laughs> I think someone's about to piss his pants. I think he's just gone there. I've been at the Glass House restaurant in Ambleside for just a day. From what I've seen so far, it's going to be bloody hard to turn this place around in a week. A month, possibly. But now it's inquest time. And there's no question where to start. That cocky chef. Left, please. Yeah. 11 chips. It was going well. Huh? Ten past nine. I went outside, um, have a quick chat with customers, and all of a sudden I started seeing this food coming back. Huh? Where do you think it broke down? You're not using the guys properly. But the guys just fucking let go as normal. The things were coming down, they, they just went fucking chaotic. Say every fucking Saturday we've ever done was exactly the same. Maybe I just shouldn't give a shit. Maybe I should just say, fuck you, give us your money, thanks very much. Then it wouldn't bother me and I could go home and it wouldn't matter if I've got a shit restaurant because there's loads of them out there and the owners are driving around in bloody Porsches. I'm driving a shitty Astro van and I'm fucking close to tears. Do you know what? I think Neil would rather throw himself in Lake Windermere than actually turn around and be the bad guy with his staff. Yeah. It's not all kitchen's fault, but, um, you know, the kitchen's the engine room. Yeah. Hey, Richard? Yeah, if we're not firing all pistons, then we're not, you know, on the ball. Pray. Yeah? Come here. Elderberry on one. Yeah, come in. The chef's answering your question. What was his question? The question was, what happened at 20 past nine? Where did we go? We were fucking motoring. You look like a sack of shite. Well, at least have the bollocks to apologise to him. Yeah. He's standing there bawling his fucking eyes out. Yeah, take your fucking hat off. We've hit rock bottom. Don't get upset. Huh? Hey. I'm telling you, I don't want you to get upset. The team will need a real boost if we're going to get back on track. It was all going so fucking well. But there's still some problems to tackle. It's my second day in the Lake District, trying to save the Glass House restaurant. And I tell you what, it's an uphill struggle. Next battle, hygiene. This place is about as clean as a puppy's litter tray. This secret film was taken last week. They knew I'd sent someone to check around, but they didn't know it was Mark Sargent, my head chef at Claridge's. And they didn't know he had a camera hidden in his hat. Plastic containers. They instantly tell me the food's not as fresh as it should be. Even the head chef's not sure. Rather than you than me, mate. This kitchen is filthy. Straight from the dirty floor into the pesto. It's supposed to be a kitchen, not a building site. <laughs> Gordon's going to have their bollocks for this. Morning. 
Let's go. Jesus, look at the shit on that. Is that clean every night? The cardinal rule of cooking. Your kitchen must be clean. And by clean, I mean spotless. The normal clean down, which is what, every Saturday night after service? We do it throughout the week. But you must have one big clean in the week, no? Just don't have the time. Randall, don't bullshit. It's not bullshit. At the end of the night, the last thing I want to do is look up. <laughs> end of the night. Make time. Clean kitchen, clean food. Lazy kitchen porter, P45. <laughs> Randall. But it's not just up to the kitchen porter. Everyone should be responsible. But they're not. You've got to trust the brigade that you pay. And secondly, yeah. um, you know, bring them on, evolve them, make them talented. Yeah. Keeping hold of them, motivating them, um, evolving them, increasing the responsibilities, working on them. Let me think how much time we spend together in the kitchen all day long. Yeah. And it looks like a second family, isn't it? It's exactly that. What we spend is the first family because we spend yeah. more time together in the kitchen than we do at home with yeah. our bloody families. Nothing more I can do till they finish. Time for Neil. I do wish he'd turn on his mobile phone, grow some bollocks, and act like a bloody boss. There are too many customers to cope with on Saturday nights, but the rest of the week, the place is deserted. That's partly because no one can find it. When I walked past for the first time, coming down here from the right hand side, I had no idea where the restaurant was. Yeah. And here, we should have a nice prominent sign. Right. Glass House Restaurant, yeah. with a menu board, beautifully lit, and whether you want to put some little bloody neon lights or nice fancy lights around it is an attraction. Right. And, and, and that lit, see that sign there, yeah. the Glass House? Yeah. And with a new logo and the new printing, just something that, you know, um, speaks value. Right. Yeah? Um, because it looks, it looks too comic-y. It doesn't even say we're a restaurant, does it? It doesn't say you're a restaurant, no. Exactly. I want to see a bloody telephone number on there. Caesar salad. Caesar yeah. salad, um, duck cakes. Now for the menu. Jam, a well-written menu uh, should bodies. entice customers inside. Yep. At best, yeah. okay. this one is confusing. At worst, it's just bizarre. I don't want to read popcorn. Go Where, popcorn. Where the fuck did that come from? So something, the vegetarians always say that they've got no there's no crunch or no body in any of the dishes. You've got no palate. What are you worrying about <laughs> vegetarian for? Yes! For God's sake. Vegetarianism <laughs> is on the decline. Um, lunch menu. Mm -hmm. Two starters, two main courses and two puddings. Yeah, I'm just wondering how many people are going to come in for yeah. a two-course lunch. Yeah. Um, we're we're going to look at the menus of the two courses. And if that's hearty, rustic, country-fied food, then trust me, because I know you don't want to let go of the sandwiches, and I totally understand. I want to let go. I just don't want to let go of the revenue. I serve sandwiches. I've yeah. got no problem serving a lobster roll, suckling pig sandwich. Yeah. I've got no problem. Uh, um, uh, a beautiful um, beef sandwich. Mm. I've got no problem serving sandwiches whatsoever. Yeah. Okay, guys. Craig? Yeah. Open mackerel sandwich. Work yeah. down. Good man. Like the season? With a clean kitchen, it. we can improve the food. Good. And I can find out exactly how the team works. Time flowers, gently now, because they're very, very, very fine. And then, Craig, yeah. Yeah. taste it as your spoon. Craig looks scared stiff of think. making a mistake. He'll have to More change salt. that if he wants to be a chef. A Less salt, salt yeah. we'll hand it in, yeah. Good. Up, salamand. Yeah. If it's not a hot pan, what happens to the fish in the pan? <laughs> it won't cook. Yeah, well, not only that, it's smart, but it'll boil, so we've got no colour on it. Two more around the outside and one in the centre. Ian's got some bad the habits, the top, but he's only been cooking for three months, and I don't think but he may make it eating, one day. How do you know? The whole thing's changing colour, and if it gets halfway, what does that mean? Turn it over. Turn it over, yeah. exactly. But we're just going to finish it on the bottom. OK. Good. Good question. You're a very, very good cook. Yeah? I don't know. Anyone ever told you that before? This restaurant is going to be better than the BLT. Yeah. Up. Up. And over. Good. Randall. How's your sandwich? Like a cat that's got the cream, in it? <laughs> <laughs> no? Different from a BLT? That's better than a BLT. Yeah. Not as good as a Big Mac. Not as good as a Big Mac. You do fucker. Not brave, you know that. Okay. In a well-run kitchen, everyone makes a contribution, but Richard hasn't even asked his team what they think the problems are. Craig, what's your um, weak point in the kitchen? This is when I get a lot of orders on. I, I don't have them in front of me, so I... Like, they get shouted at once, and then I have to probably check the ticket again. 
put it together in your own mind, then just jot it down. Saturday nights are quite hard when all the checks are coming on. Mm -hmm. And I do kind of lose where I'm at and how yeah. many steaks I've got on order and how many. Mm -hmm. But yeah. when it goes quiet, it's mm -hmm. kind of like, it's difficult to motivate yourself. It's yeah. difficult. That's what Richard said, yeah. Yeah. Randall, is that your third one? Second, Second one. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Niels finally agreed to a new lunch menu. Simple, fresh food for a tenner, including the new mackerel sandwich. That's We've just had a taste of each other's as well. This is excellent. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. At last, oh, some happy customers. We've got a restaurant full of happy people. Fantastic. Chive, small yeah. amount. Ian, treat it with a bit of love and care. Place it in there gently, yeah? yeah. And you don't throw it in. My God, the kitchen suddenly sounds as if it's running well. One salmon, one sausage. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Random. Sweep the floor, please. I've done it already. You've done it already? I've well, it's still done. I want to sweep yeah. it. Flour everywhere, yeah? And I didn't see you do it anyway. What time was that? What time was that? Uh, when you're doing the embracing just here. It's dirty. Let's go. Nice sweep. There you go. Claire, can you let me know when that front is happening? Yeah. Well, three minutes, Claire. Three Fantastic. minutes on the front. Within 30 seconds, every section of the kitchen is talking to one another. Good. Claire, gone Everyone in the team's responding, but Richard's not working with them. Do you want him to help you? I'm putting the sausage under the uh, land, though. That's all I've got to do. Sure? Yeah. 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 This is what I want to Wait. get established. Quiet lunch, not really that busy. I just want to see us working together even more now. I know there's nothing for you to do right now, but there's... Yeah? yeah? yeah. I know it's painful, but get him doing something for you. Please? Yes, yeah. Thank you. And you? Hey. Oh. Ask yeah. him. Can I do anything for you, Richard? Yeah. What do you need doing? Okay. Sausages, where are they? Mash, ready in your sauce, what can I do? Yeah. And bring the brigade together. Even Richard said to me, the guy that's got no man management skills, he's been watching you and the way you are with the guys, yeah. and you're bringing out the best in them. Yeah. You're bringing out the hunger. That's what you pay him 25 grand a year for. I know that. I'm not, I'm not being funny or pissing yeah. around with 25 grand a year. I know. a lot of money. But I've been stupid with them. I've been cradling them. My head was too far up my bloody ass to realise what the hell was going on. Neil needs to get his head out of his ass and focus on his job, keeping customers happy and making sure they spend their money. The roasted pepper and tomato gazpacho is... He needs his customers to bypass the cheap early supper menu that runs till 7.30 and eat a la carte, and that's how he'll pay off his debts and rebuild his reputation. Let me just tell you something. 15 portions of apple cake, 15 portions of fondant, and 15 portions of bloody gratin dauphinoise. Five nights a week is £125,000 a year turnover. Hey, on three items out of nearly 20 on a menu. Yeah? Um, the last table just arrived, said they were early, 15 minutes early. So I want to make sure that Neil doesn't give them the early supper menu because. We're going to find out whether or not they're here for a bargain or not. I want to sell the a la carte, not the cheapo menu, because they look like they've got a bit of money. Now, you've got two menus on today. You've got the a la carte menu, and we've also got the early supper menu. Uh, so you've got lots to choose from. Table, ooh, that table just arrived and said they're really early, 20 minutes early. They're booked at 7.30, so therefore, don't give them the cheap menu. The table of four? Yeah, just sat down. Right. What did you give them? I get them both. Yeah, damn. Will he never learn? Neil must work the tables, not worry about the kitchen. If he only focused, he'd do a fine job. Do you know what? You are a phenomenal salesman. You've got the most amazing wine cellar. And you can take an order, you can take an order, and you can cane it on the wine. And the better the food, the more money they're going to spend on wine. After three days, things are looking up. The guys upstairs are starting to get the basics. But my big worry is the kitchen. Richard just isn't earning his 25 grand. I'm really sorry for saying it, but the guy shows no form of inspiration. So if he's not inspired, you know, these young guys are going to dwindle away. Make sure little kingdom, yeah? Control it. It's the biggest problem in the glass house, but Neil just won't face the facts. I'm going to have to show him how well the kitchen can run without his head chef. Don't take this the wrong way, but I want you to take the night off tonight. And I want you to take the night off. Now, I'd love both of you to have dinner together. Right. Don't you? have to eat here, do we? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yes. Dodgy cheese. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you are. When was the last time you guys had dinner together? Truthfully, without any bullshit. We went to Guelph about two and, half and a half years ago. Two and a half years ago. Yeah, well, hey, hello. <laughs> two and a half years ago. And when was the last time you sat and ate here? No? Never done it. Can we do it? Yeah, we can do it. Thank you. There's only one condition that this takes place. The kitchen downstairs don't know about it. And I need a bit of support from you guys as well. No yeah? Because it'd be too exciting. I've sent Richard home. The yeah. team may not yeah. be up to this. He's and if it goes wrong, I may look a right well, tosser. Yeah. 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 Uh, we had an absolute nightmare night last night. I left you together for two hours and it was the biggest shithole in Britain. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to rectify that. Yeah. You're on the hot plate. You're going to be running the kitchen. OK? And then, if it's going really well, I want you to run the kitchen for half an hour. And God forbid, <laughs> if it is going that well, yeah, scratch your head, scratch your bollocks, I'm not interested. I want you to run the kitchen yeah. for half an hour. Yeah? Right. Maybe from 1.30 to 2 o'clock in the morning, I don't know yet. <laughs> Let's just really work for each other. Yeah. Let's not lose the plot. And let's show him, your chef, that you yeah. guys uh, you know. are more talented than he believes you are. Yeah. OK? Yeah. Homemade milk jelly dolls. Tell you what, why don't you... Thank you. Why don't you host the meeting? Yeah? Claire, two seconds? Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Right, me, I'm shutting up. OK? You host the meeting. Mm -hmm. You call the shots. Right? Soup. Got soup. Pumpkin. Pumpkin soup, right, yeah. Oh, by the way, it's, it's, it's on your section. Mm -hmm. Fish pie with peas. We've got 12, and we've got one more downstairs, and he beat 30. Mm -hmm. Suckling pig, how long? Comes out in the oven about eight minutes. OK, that's fine. Right. Apple and almond cake. Yep, so... Pretty good, OK. Really well done. Yeah, little pen on the back, not a little kiss, though. It's perfect. <laughs> Lovely. Right. We're going to be OK, and we're going to prove to them, especially Richard, that we can do it without him, yeah? Don't worry. Don't worry about it. OK, Claire? Yeah, no worries. Yes. Ready? Yeah. Table 37 has arrived, and it's gone 7.30, so they'll definitely get the a la carte menu. Yeah. Two lamb, one salmon, yes? Basket salmon, I'll do salmon. Cheers, mate. Yes. Hi. Cheers, Cocker. I can only pray that Neil tastes the difference in the food. Then over a nice glass of wine, he can give Richard what for. In the centre of the cutter, think about what you're doing. Don't rush it. Craig? What are you doing? Labelling this tub. Labelling this tub. How about looking at the food and show a little bit of interest what you're doing? OK. P, leek tart, a little bit of asparagus, and just glaze that round. Thank you very much, sir. This is fucking amazing. Try a bit of that tart. No, that's not. Try some. <laughs> if you don't eat that soon, mate, I am. <laughs> told you I've had a sexual experience downstairs in the kitchen for the last three, four days. Well done. Well done. Okay. Salmon. Don't send it, Randall. Don't send it. Salmon, salmon. Yes. Watch the hot Thank fat. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Good, 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 good. And okay. bloody good. Randall, away at table 34, please. When he's gone, are you going to be able to instill what he's instilled in the middle? He is now in charge of the kitchen, everybody. Plus How many lamb and order in, please? One lamb, one loose pig, one doof and Good. You've got to sustain it now, forever. No, no. Do you know what I mean? I am shitting myself to produce this food. I am really, really fucking scared. But I'll die trying. I feel a lot better than last night so far, yeah? I'll say. <laughs> yeah? Um, is that not because Richard's not here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. What do you mean you're not going to say? We won't have a job if we <laughs> say <laughs> that. Well, let me ask you. You've got a pair of bollocks. Has it gone well without Richard? <laughs> it's gone smooth. <laughs> <laughs> From a monetary point of view, I mean, Head Chef Richard you know, has been given the night off. Just so I can show the Russian owner, Neil, how strong the kitchen is without him. I think the team have done a bloody good job, but will Neil agree? Table 37, uh, thought the food was absolutely fantastic. I'd like to uh, come down and meet you and the rest of the team. Are they local or...? In the oven? Up. Oh. <laughs> Good That's table 37. Well done. 
I mean that. Well done. You responsible for that food. Neil uh, looks delighted. But has he had the bollocks yeah. to read Richard the Riot Act? No, seriously, guys, it really was nice. It was absolutely beautiful. You did what tonight? Uh, we all did it in turns. Yeah, Good made us all do. We all just kept swapping sections. Yeah. We, we all worked well. together as a team and we all, we we all really like... clubbed together. It was great. You let me down tonight? No, oh, we've done we... you proud, I think. I thought yeah. we were very well down here, went smoothly. Very professional. Tonight, for the first time in such a long time, I went and had a meal that I can't complain about at all. Can't. It, 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 fucking sex on a plate, guys. Remember, you're my boys, my girls. At the end of the end of the time, mine. But I need to know in the next two days what you're going to do in the <laughs> shop. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I don't know, Richard. I fucking don't know. If you want to go and sit in a book shop, doing fuck all for the rest of your life. That's your decision. I said it was your decision when you wanted to But you know, the buy. bookshop's good for my degree. I can get my degree there. Got me by the shop and Curly's there, chef. <laughs> the team performed bloody well tonight. Without Richard. And Neil should look really close at that because that is a bad investment. I'm more than halfway through my week at the glass house. The good news is, the kitchen team are doing really well. Last night, now. they cooked without their head chef, Richard, and did a great in, job. But Richard's still struggling, right. and Neil, the owner, uh, isn't tough enough to get rid of him. Plus. Do you think he takes advantage of you? Because you're such a nice guy to work with. Sometimes, yeah. But then I think everyone takes advantage of me. He gets paid that amount of money yeah, each and every month, and I it's know. a bloody good salary. Mm. But there doesn't seem to be any onus on, you know, evolving. Let's get better. He's got to make money. This is your livelihood. Yeah. This is, this I know is, it is. This is your, I this. And, your and, lease, yeah. your livelihood, your family, yeah. your yeah. money, and if this goes did this up, go, yeah, then they've then, all buggered off and got yeah, a new job. I know that. And you're sat here yeah. in the shit. So you're taking a bit out for service, yeah? Myself? I've yeah. never put Richard Sisters back in the kitchen. Right Without him, it's a happier place, serving better food, but... It's Neil's decision. Do you now realise how much talent is in here? Yeah, I, the guys because I've got, what I was saying to them last night, at the end of the day, we are a family and we've got to work it out. Uh, we but you're the leader. You, you, you're yeah, the, you're the big eye, the big I'm inspiration. Dead. I want them to come on. So this slides me. back down. They'll slide back down. No, it's they're not slide back down. Okay. My next challenge, right, to relaunch the menu by the end of the week so the glass house can separate. start to win back its we'll customers. Go, um, see, Maybe Richard will um, finally we'll show me he can run the kitchen. As far as I'm concerned, it's his last uh, chance. Garlic. For the team, we'll it's another yeah. opportunity to prove themselves. Yeah, good. And that's the most important thing about being a talented cook, you know that? Yeah. Having that inner strength to turn around and say, no, stop, no, that's not good no, enough. No. And what did we talk about yesterday? Mistakes staying where? In the kitchen, yeah. every time. And the minute you break that cardinal's rule and you start sending those mistakes, because you think the chef won't see it, yeah. I'm going to cane your ass. you know that? Yeah, I hate And, um, you know, like you said... They want to First step of the relaunch is to sandwich. cut down the menu. So I give a little bit of twist on there. Yeah. And when I went through the, uh, the, the menus uh, last night, late last night, mm -hmm. 85 to 90 dishes. Yeah. How on earth we get to control that, you know, over, uh, you know, it's a, it's a lot of lot of gear on there, and no, I've not actually sat down and counted it. Uh -huh. If the menu's reduced, I and mean, we've got six starters, six main courses, and five or six puddings, mm -hmm. we're going to sell more of them. Yeah. And yeah. so the more we sell of them, mm. the cheaper it comes to make. Yeah. Especially when we're doing the lamb shanks. Yeah. I personally don't want to see frozen but lovely in brackets next to chips. If you don't put that, then the buggers turn around and go, it's a lovely meal, but I can't believe your chips are frozen. No, you're the only restaurant I've ever, ever come across that writes frozen but lovely. Hot fat. <laughs> Vegetables in. As well as reducing the menu, we have to make sure the food's top quality. That's the team's job. Main course, local lamb. I've no doubt Claire can improve on the fatty lamb shank I had when I first ate here. That's what we're looking for there. That's exactly what we're looking for. But I want it all the way round, not just on the top. Hurry up, then we're going to make some bread and butter pudding, yes? The bread and butter pudding they used to serve here was pure stodge. My version should be perfect for the new menu. I put Craig yeah, in charge of the recipe. Cut I hope the god he's up to it. What do we flavour with this time? Uh, vanilla. Baileys. Baileys. So as it cooks, the whole thing is not becoming dry. Yeah. 
chicken. Very really good. And my spies told me last week that we didn't even wash this lettuce for Caesar salad. I don't want hands in there yet. And a dish they could become famous for, a classic Caesar salad. That's one for a year. So it's live. Look at the contour of the plates going round. So we're putting the top part of the salad around the outside of the plate. We're going to lightly glaze the warm egg in the centre, parmesan, crispy bacon, and then nice crispy croutons around the outside. There you go. The new glass house. Caesar salad. Ah, fingers off. Look. Here. Wipe yeah. it. Yeah. A brand new menu and a fresh start. If all goes well, tonight we'll see the glass house reborn. 70 local people have been invited to try the new food. Everything, everywhere, has got to be just right. And I mean right. I mean perfect. Don't take this the wrong way. Yeah. And I mean don't take this the wrong okay, way. Yeah, go on. Last night you had bad breath. OK. Yeah? And when we're standing there talking to customers and you're trying to sell them something, yeah, it doesn't smell good. Even Richard seems to realise the importance of tonight's launch. Listen, I'm fired up. It's fucking going to work. Yeah? Yeah. Let's scream it. Let's fucking shout, Chef. When I call a check out, yeah? Wait yeah. for the end of the check. Yes, Chef! Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, come on. We, Chef! We're the chef. Yeah. Looking at reducing the menu, Richard, and having um, slashed the prices, this is not an expensive dish to put together, is it? Not, no, not at all. Fresh fish, seasonal fish. I've designed the menu specially for Richard. Everything's cooked in advance, so there's no chance of a mistake. And the haddock cost absolutely nothing this morning. What was it 70 pence a pound? Yeah? Yeah. And it smells lovely. Sex on a spoon. Um, who have we got in uh, that we know tonight? A tabling of all the people locally that have been these bed and breakfast. Well, there's quite a few in the media. Yeah. We've got the, one of the head guys from the tourism. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, they want to contact you, so I'm you gonna, make, uh, make yourself available. I'm going to recharge my mobile, which I uh, turned off many months ago. Mm. Hallelujah. Neil's behaving like a proprietor with balls, proud of his restaurant. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. He's even booked the guests in shifts, so there's less pressure on the kitchen. Progress at last. We've just got everybody in by the 8 o'clock, so we've got 25 minutes. This is easy. Hello. We have never met. And in two minutes' time, our, our, our silence starts. Claire. Yes? If the kitchen is quiet, everyone can concentrate. Then it should be impossible to confuse orders. Oh no, come on, Randall. Randall, come here. We're supposed to be working together on this, aren't you? Richard's calling out orders and you're tipping cutlery upside down. You can at least wait till he's finished first, no? So once he's finished talking to his brigade, Yes, we can give him an answer. Sure. Oh, this lamb's definitely better off the bone. Really yes. It's melting. I've got parsnip. Roast parsnip. Okay. Your, fa your favourite. It's <laughs> <laughs> really good. Very, very smooth, so hopefully touch wood rest of the night, it'll be even better. Ian, yeah. I swap tables. You still have three Caesar salad and one pressed ham. Richard's back in charge of the kitchen. There's only food to reheat and salad's the dress. The dressing's missing, that's all. Apart from that, it looks lovely. Oh. Do you mind if we start? <laughs> Two pieces pan chefs, please. Ian's distraught, but it is Richard's job to check everything before it leaves the kitchen. Stop moving on your toes. Now! Yes! Oh, good lads, good lads, come on. Let's not go down, guys. It's starting. Lift. Randall, He's making a lot of noise. At the front. But he's not leading the team. Quick, quick, quick. Uh, nail tables 49, 21 next. Orders are piling up again. Chef, we've got, we got to speed this up. Yes. We're looking bad. Not tonight, please. Not tonight. We're not losing it. Oh, for fuck's sake. Come on, Randall, quicker. Five fish pies. Two, three, four, five, six. Six total. Two at the front, Claire. 
don't really know what the hell's going on in there, but you know, let me just say, for the last three or four minutes, uh, being in there, it looks shockingly Randall. bad. Where's check on Claire? 49, it's up in the top. No, don't go. 49, yeah? You got the number? They really have managed to fuck it up properly again. And they don't have to cook anything except dress a salad and talk to each other. They can't even do that. So uh, this is a fucking embarrassment. Wait one second. Listen. Yeah, that's fine. Take one Caesar salad out, please. Are you sure? Yes. Change the table number to 51. Where is your 51? Next. Well, I'm not taking any prisoners anymore. I'm seriously not. People don't pull away, they're out of here. Because I'm not fucking about. I won. Table 12. Um, what's that there for, Rich? Neil may say he won't take prisoners, but surely he can see Richard can't cut it. But instead of plucking up the courage to sack his chef, he moans about my Caesar salad. You don't get it at all? Why are you too big? Too big? In comparison to what you were serving? Yeah, I know what we were serving, but the sauce with that is absolutely beautiful, the dressing, but it's very rich. Absolutely pants. Um, Total bollocks. Right. That is a proper Caesar salad done. What I haven't done is crush the lettuce. And the shit I saw last right. week with cooked jumping on the salad I'm not and just... squashing it. No, let me finish. Oh. Squashing the salad up the side of the bowl, and you're telling me that's too big. That is fresh salad, goofily washed, and I haven't even put my hands in it to dress it. I've let it dress itself in the bowl. So what you're telling me is absolute bollocks. And I'm ready for a fucking argument. Right now. You're talking you out your ass. You want If you want an argument. You're talking can, out your ass. Can we go outside now? I'll go anywhere. Back. You're talking Rather out your in the fucking middle of the ass. Restaurant. Can you stop talking? You're talking out your ass. There's no point talking to me. He's going to use that language in the restaurant. Oh, really? Amazing. He's got big enough bollocks to stand up to me, but he can't tell his own chef, who's paid 25 grand a year, that it's time he took his P45. We survived the evening, but only just. I shouldn't care, but I do like these guys, and I want the place to be a success. I am so distraught with Richard tonight. He couldn't organise it, couldn't control it, and you know what? He had nothing to bloody cook. It's my last day at the glass house. Hey, it's red tree time. Yeah, how far is it from here? It's around the corner, about two minutes. Yeah. The most important thing now uh, is to tell the real workers they've done a great job. I didn't think I was actually capable of doing this week until he actually came. Uh -huh. But now I think that I've I'm just starting to get the hang of it. Mm -hmm. And we will keep the standards up because you've really done done a lot for the kitchen and you've done a lot for me personally as well. You've done it for yourself. All I've done is drawn it out of you, that's all. Got it in here. Yeah, out. yeah, I, that's, that's it. All. That's You've what done I, it. So you felt it today when I had my little time to myself. I just couldn't, couldn't help but just stand there and just go, bloody hell, this is me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you haven't had any sleep no. since last night? No. My God. Why haven't you been sleeping? Just a drama, just the rush of the job, so... Uh, the rush of the job? Oh, yeah. The inspiration I get from you. <laughs> you honestly haven't slept? No, honestly haven't. Bloody hell, Randall. This is not an SAS course, you know that. Randall, got to get some sleeping, boy. So fired up, he hasn't slept? God, maybe we are related after all. Wood, 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 three. You have a natural touch with food, you know that? You walk around the kitchen like a ballerina. And just the way you position yourself, you're agile, you're on your toes. And I still can't believe you've been cooking for three months. Yeah. Right. Touch yourself, just get it. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of I'm really touch. going to miss Claire. Because your strength over the last seven days has been inspirational. I think I'm going to sell my shop. And I'm going to get it back into the kitchen as soon as possible. I think that's a good idea. Gordon Ramsay thinks I'm a really good chef. <laughs> Oh, my God. Neil had a word. Well, you guys have a word every night after service. What did he say last night? He gave me the options, three options, and took the third one. Uh, what were the options? Well, one, one to leave, two to take a pay cut and uh, drop down the ladder, and three to stay, work my arse off, develop the guys, carry on with what we've been doing over the last few days, and, and go for it. 
are you confident that you can become the new Glasshouse chef? Yeah. Truthfully, how long will you give him to pull his socks up? A month. A month, yeah. Yeah. Just promise me one thing. Yeah. You make the fucking decision and you stick to it. No, I want more than anything in my heart for Richard to prove me wrong. And I hope he does. <laughs> Never let your mistakes leave your kitchen. Oh. Randall, I want you to hang that up That's with a bit of right? pride and passion. And I want that to replace that disgusting, dingy, horrible, yellow, smelly clock downstairs. Come hey. on! Hey! Who's that, Chef? Three months have passed since I've spent a week at the Glass House restaurant trying to rescue it from disaster. Menu looks nice, nice and small. Whew. Now I'm back to see what, if anything, has changed. Hello, Neil. Hello, Mr. Ramsey. How are you? How are you? Good nice to see you. Well? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Yeah? Yeah. You look a lot more relaxed. You, know, you look a little... I, I, you look happier. I'm a different person to the one that was here. It's, Come a, on it's a different Neil to the first person you saw Good. when you came in. And I'm complete, I'm more confident. You know, I mean, you came in and you highlighted things that I kind of knew that they were there, but they were buried in the back of my head. You know, you brought them all to the forefront. Yeah. And, and, and I'm glad you did that. And but God, what a week, though. I mean, we went through a roller coaster. Oh, it was event. a hell of a week. We had our week. highs and our lows. Things were really grim when I first came here. Sadly, I did. And by grim, I mean catastrophic. That was um, stuck at the back of my throat, but however. Rich is calling out orders, and you're tipping cutlery upside down. Yeah, I'm going to cane your ass, you know that? Yeah. Not tonight, please, not tonight. The kitchen team came into their own when I gave head chef Richard the night off. Good, 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 good. I'm bloody good. Let me ask you, you've got a pair of bollocks. Has it gone well without Richard? It's gone smooth. <laughs> I'll die trying. You're talking out your ass. I'll go anywhere. You're talking Rather out your in the fucking middle of the ass. restaurant. You, know. you hated my Caesar salad. I didn't hate I your Caesar salad. It was just too bloody big. <laughs> I'll still stand by that. Um, the big question. Yeah. Who's the chef? Richard. Richard is still here. Yes. Is he downstairs? He's downstairs. Oh, and he's nervous, so be oh, nice he? to him, yeah? Right, be nice. Morning, guys. Morning. Good morning, Gordon. How are you, Richard? Very well, you. You well? Yeah, sound. One thing I have noticed, as soon as I walked in um, to the kitchen, is how these plastic containers start creeping back out everywhere. <laughs> Look at all them along there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're back. The new dishes that you've involved um, and, and put on the menu, why? We're doing a Telagio pomegranate risotto. Mm -hmm. uh, which that sounds is... intriguing. So we've got a crunchy pomegranate seeds yeah. mixed in risotto. Yeah. Sounds um... fucking revolting. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Welcome back. This is a new dish that we put on. Tell me about it. That's a uh, puff pastry. Yeah, we've got some mm -hmm. red, red onion over there. We've got mm -hmm. put goat's cheese on top of that. Nice to see Craig's cooking more. Yeah, and we sold about seven when we put it first on. Ian, what have you been doing new and exciting to tell me? Uh, got a toffee fruit crumble on now. Which sells toffee well. fruit crumble? Yeah. It sounds good. Well. Come on. With creme fresh, no, you can't. Well, that sounds really nice. It's yeah, winter. In the middle yeah, of the late district. I mean, absolutely beautiful. I thought Ian had real talent. I'd give him a job in one of my kitchens any day. And his girlfriend. And where's my sweetheart, Claire? Where, where is she? Uh, she had problems selling the shop. I couldn't get out of it. And uh, she comes in at weekends, gives us a lift at weekends, keeps her hand in. It's a shame. She's a big loss. And my fellow Scott Randall. He's gone too. Sad. This is risotto with Telagio cheese, flat leaf parsley and pomegranate. Be nice to win, win him over. Neil's hung in there, but it can't have been easy. It's gone closer to the wire than I'd realised. How uh, close were you to closing the door? Very close. The worst thing for me was like not being able to pay the guys. At one stage, I didn't, I didn't think I'd be able to pay them. You know, and I think oh, these guys, shit. they put the effort in, they put the graft in, they've done everything there, and they've always been behind you. Um, and it's like, suddenly, you can't put any money in the pocket. And it's been a constant struggle. But it's like, now I'm, I can actually say to myself, well, I'm going to start reaping the rewards. Mm -hmm. And I will do. You know, and I'm a lot more positive about it. In fact, January 
it's been fantastic. Weekends have been busy, you know. There is a difference in the food, you know. Presentation, it just looks mm. slick. It tastes, you know, tasty. Well, thank you. You're still a bugger. Still not convinced about my pomegranate risotto. Are you not? That's, I'm going to think about that one on the train <laughs> on the way back, because that, yeah, that beats my fucking head in that one. Um, it's been a pleasure today, and it's been of interest. Um, keep it up. Clink, yes? Clink. Yeah. Clink, clink. There's lots to celebrate. Turnover's up 20% and rising. The restaurant's building a good reputation and going from strength to strength. You never know. Neil's nervous breakdown might never happen. <laughs> when you come back, just book on someone else's name. Sorry? Yeah. That's it now. Every bloody name that books will be going, that guy sounding funny on the phone. I'm telling you, it's Gordon! <laughs> I really hope they succeed, and I really hope they do well. But any chef that comes up with a risotto finished with bloody pomegranates needs a kick up the ass Again. Pomegranates in a fucking risotto. They must be off their fucking rocker. The Walnut Tree Inn is in trouble. Stop now, OK? You take over okay. and see if we can pull ourselves together a little bit and get ourselves out of the shit, because in 15 minutes, this place is going to be the biggest shithole in Wales. The head chef's quit, and the kitchen's a joke. Cockroaches live on the floor. You're not a fucking cockroach. Even with that hairstyle, you're still not a cockroach. The customers have fled, and the owner's so broke, he's had to sell his house. So he's asked me to help him out. But I've only got one week to find out what's happened and turn things around. You shut it, OK? Back in your corner and listen to what's going on. Do you hear what I said? Yeah. Do it. Good. I'll show the owner where he's going wrong. Welcome back. Where the fuck have you been? And do everything I can to help him. And if he doesn't cut his prices and listen, well, quite frankly, he's on his own. Fuck it. <laughs> Hundreds of restaurants open in Britain every year, but over two thirds close in the first 12 months. The Walnut Tree in Abergavenny has been one of Britain's most famous restaurants for nearly 40 years. Set in beautiful Welsh countryside, it's the proud holder of a coveted Michelin star. It owes its outstanding reputation to this man, Franco Terruccio. He was one of the first celebrity chefs. Three years ago, Francesco Mattioli, another Italian, bought the walnut tree. I know him well. He's managed some of London's best restaurants. I need an answer, guys. So he should know what he's doing. I've come to find out how, in just three years, He's managed to mess it all up. Morning, sir. How are you? How are you? All right? Mate, you're losing weight again. No, huh? I'm not losing weight. What's the smallest numbers you've done in three years? Is it? Is it for lunch? For uh, dinner once. It was a Thursday night. And, um... Michelin star? Michelin star, and it didn't happen. Simple as that. Shit. And, uh... Yeah, that was bad. Every kitchen just has to have a head chef running it. Since Francesco lost his, he's been trying to do the job himself. It's, uh, one of those I'll take this. Are you going to serve it? Yes, because... Jesus. <laughs> cook, serve, cook, serve, cook, serve. It's a big mistake. Francesco's not a trained chef, and he shouldn't even be in the kitchen. Keep on going. He should be out in the dining room, charming his customers. I don't know how are you, all right? After all... There are more staff in the bloody kitchen than there are customers in the dining room. And not one of them seems to be doing anything. So you're just cooking potatoes here? Yeah. This huge section, Potatoes. and all you're cooking Potatoes. is spuds. Yeah. No. You're out of order. Yes. Can I say anything? Francesco doesn't trust anyone to do anything. Right, Bill, on 11 and 12 right now. Octopus. So another three, you said. Ciao. All the best. Thank you very much. After you. Talk about a headless chicken. No wonder he's lost weight and customers. You're working like a donkey. I mean, you're here, there, everywhere, and, and, and trying to run it. Overall, you're the, the most amazing host. You can charm the pants off anyone, um, and you, you can sell good wine. And the short period of time I've been in here today, uh, one thing you know, I've come to terms with is that you've got to get out of the kitchen. The Walnut Tree got a mission staff. Francesca had been here for a year. That's given to a restaurant on the back of the consistency, the freshness of the ingredients, keeping it seasonal, and the individual flair of the chef. But Francesca's lost the chef who won the award. If the standards have slipped, the inspectors will soon take away that precious Michelin star. Time to check out the food. 
because I um, saw lunch today from the kitchen, um, I'm going to go in the dining room now uh, and have a, a bite to eat. And I'd like you, not to present the menu, but to show me three dishes, what represents the walnut tree in. With a Michelin star, you can charge top-notch prices, but only if you provide top-notch food. I'm pretty confident he's like it. Porcini and palm ham lasagna was always a favourite here. Boy. Very boring. You've got to move on. You've got to search and you've got to evolve, develop and, and create excitement constantly when you're charging these prices. Main course, fish stew. Thank you. But the mussels haven't even been cleaned. We serve mussels in a self-contained stew. Yeah, they've got to be cleaned because when you're serving them like this, you can hear at the bottom, there's a lot of grit and sand. So it's just like eating a bowl of clay seasoned with sand. That is constantly grinding between your teeth. 28 pound a main course, and someone taking the mickey. Because if someone served that in my restaurant, I'd go fucking berserk. <laughs> OK, um, I asked you earlier for your best, the best, the best of Wales. The big build-up was for the classic Italian fish stew. And sadly, when it arrived, everything in that dish was overcooked. And while you piss off for a three-hour break to style your hair and to have a kip, clean the fucking muscles. So we've hit rock bottom. Okay. Yeah, welcome to the real world. Sure. Tomorrow, we're gonna pick ourselves back up and start off with a clean slate. It's my second day in Wales, where I'm trying to help the owner save the famous walnut tree restaurant. It's got all sorts of problems, but it does still have a Michelin star. And you don't get that without a top chef. But Francesco's lost his. We need to find another one fast. Head chef criteria. Head um, chef criteria. Young, enthusiastic. Yeah. Ambitious. Firm, ambition. Yeah. Someone that keeps you out of the kitchen. So just write. <laughs> Something who keeps me out of the kitchen. And, uh... Hello, Ross. Good evening, Mr. Ramsey. Uh, we've got a list of ingredients. Um, we're just going to ask you to go through and cook up something very simple. Yeah, yeah. thanks for the Good. surprise, lads. <laughs> it's all right. Always a surprise with me. Um, salary? Starting salary. Starting salary, we say 23. Always an interesting question when you interview a young chef. What salary are you looking for? And they yes. tell you within yeah. 30 seconds of course. Yeah, what they're about. <laughs> what would you be happy with as a starting salary? I'd be happy with 30. 30 as a starting salary? Fuck off out of it. Do you want me to write it, or do you know how to write English? No, you probably write English better than me. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll write it down. You phone it through, but you pay for it, OK? Yeah. It's expensive. But it's very hard just to go in there and just yeah, cook. and just do it. Um, 15 minutes? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see if he uses all the ingredients, whether he puts the clams with a haddock with um, the onions, or he does a nice tomato, um, a rocket okay. salad. Yeah. Something plain and simple. Your mother could make that. It's just eating raw pasta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, boring. Sort of kind of thing I expect the missus to do. Yeah, I thought it was a little bit plain, Jane, boring. Um, and certainly not worth 30 grand a year, that's for sure. No, but like, that's the ingredients you were given. But don't start blaming your tools. No, no, no. No? No. Take it on the chin. I, I wouldn't have changed it, no. Next up is Santa Rosso, second in command at the Holiday Inn in Swindon. Could be a bandito. Huh? Could be a big bandito. <laughs> Let's yeah. shoot the bandito. <laughs> what do you think, Maria? Mafia. Mafia. <laughs> Santo, Gordon, yeah. take yeah, a seat. Nice um, very well experienced man? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I like cooking. You like cooking, yeah, yeah. I can see that, yeah. Right. What do you know about the walnut tree? Nothing. Nothing at all? Nothing at all. You don't know about the history, um, no. the reputation? No. Uh, the Michelin star? No. No, so. What, if you don't know anything about the walnut tree, walnut tree yeah. why did you come for the job? Because I, I say it's time for me to change. Right. Um, and what's the current menu at the Swindon? We have some steak. Yeah. Gammon, chicken, and a lot of microwave. A yeah. lot of? Microwave. 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 
think of something magical. Keep it simple. Oh yeah. Um, and enjoy it. Okay. Thank you. And when I'm thinking, wow, what kind of flavor I wanna, I wanna come up with. Um, and let's see. Very rare a joke like that can cook. Very rare. Mm. This is a fantastic one. And just explain what they are, please. Yes. This is, uh, I call it pasta fresca. Pasta fresca? Pasta fresca, fresh pasta, uh -huh. with vongole and salata. Mm -hmm. Thank you. With the lemon juice. Mm -hmm. Just nice and clean. Just mm -hmm. do it. What's all, that is pepper? Yeah, black pepper, yeah. Black pepper. Thank you, Joey. Thank you very much. I felt like sneezing at all that pepper everywhere. Yeah. Mm. Jesus Christ. No, that's just a pile of stodge. There's nothing in there, is there? He's sad. Yeah. He's sad to see something. There's also a compliment. compliment. Yeah, yeah I, I found it yeah, miles away from what we wanted. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, a little bit embarrassing, really. Yeah. Because it was below average. Yeah. £23,000. And I wouldn't even pay him 23,000 lira. Even with the Michelin star, it's going to be hard to find a head chef in the middle of Wales. But I'm still banning Francesco from the kitchen right now. Where's some water? Where's Francesco? Yes, sir. I really would appreciate it if you don't come anywhere near the kitchen. Keep I know uh, how stubborn you are. Don't dare step over that line. Stay that side. Thank you. This way, I'll get to know the team better. Blakey's the most junior. He just come off the building site because the weather's too cold. Spike, he's here on work experience. Kevin's a waiter and handyman. He's been here since the old days and knew the walnut tree in its prime. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Gordon. How are you? Yeah, well, uh, obviously with that accent, local boy. Well, very local. From uh, Abergavenny? Yes, I am. Uh, do you like a laugh, Richard? Uh, no, I just, yeah, I just love hard work. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Evil, like, uh, we all, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's a local boy, very ambitious and keen to get on. But Francesco says he's not a team player. So that's my secret. I'll stick that down there. Put a padlock on that. <laughs> and Stefano's the most experienced chef. Francesco won't let him run the kitchen, but I want to see what he's made of. So. I'm going to put him in charge. It's a normal lunch service. And Francesco's wife, Enrica, has brought some friends in for a bite to eat. Kitchen's in your hands now. You've got to come out. You've got to start talking and start. You're propelling the brigade and bringing it together. Let's go. Just go on. No, no, turn around and dress the brigade. That's it. Just go on. One tortelli di zucca, one chicken plus chips for four kids, one crab, one and dive. To follow one loin of pork, two chicken, and one rocket. Hey, hey. Uh, I need some chips for these chickens, yeah? Come on, Steph, too quiet. The only person I can hear now is Gary, and you're running the kitchen. Let's go. Okay. Garnish, Blakey. <clears throat> Where the fuck's Blakey? Blakey. Look out the other window. What are you doing? Well, uh, 5DR, yes. I need the nicer guys. No wonder Francesco's back in the kitchen. His you family are still waiting for their lunch. Everything's out there now. Everyone's standing, staring at their food, and two people haven't got it. Come on. Come on, Steph, let's go. Well, this is a fucking disaster. OK, chicken, how long? Stefano, how long? Chips. Yeah. Do you know this, is for, the, this right. is for the boss's wife? You know that? Touch it. If it's stone cold, yeah, get another one in. Hey. He owns the place, and I'm not going to serve that. Let's go. Along for the chicken, Karen. Chicken. Uh, Ready? Let's go. Bring it together, then. Let's go. Nice and hot this time. Send it. The food is late and cold, 
Stefano can't organise chips for a four-year-old. OK, right, come here, just stop everybody, yeah? I mean, stop. Come here, you, come here. Oh, shut up! Shut up! I'm talking. That was a disaster. Complete disaster. The food standing, hanging around the past, nothing happening, and you're over there. And then just, you know, I'm sorry, but it's not good enough. You're not, nothing's coming out, OK? Stop now, OK? You take over okay. and see if we can pull ourselves together a little bit and get ourselves out of the shit, because in 15 minutes, this place is going to be the biggest shithole in Wales. You, shut it, OK? Back in your corner and listen to what's going on. Do you hear what I said? Yeah. Do it! Right, let's go. A little clear down. Yeah, clear down first. OK, Gary, you know where we are, yes? Yeah. And the brill. You decide exactly what you want doing in your mind. Two minutes yep. before you dress, you turn around and dress the brigade and tell them exactly what you want. Yep. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, one braised beef, one venison sausage, one brill, one tuna away. Where, 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 Let's keep it together. Hey, where's the team? And I don't want him back in here telling us we can't fucking do it again, okay? So, a bit of teamwork now, yeah? If he can't hear you, then don't screw him for that, okay? Because we're not a one man band. Check on, two covers. One pigeon, one oyster, the follow one ribeye, one duck. Wait. Okay. Next to go, can you go with the scallops? One for the salmon, one for the salad. And a salmon in the up, please. Gary is a real arrogant little fucker, but at least he can speak, unlike Stefano, that can't even run a fucking bath, let alone a fucking kitchen. Any of the tuna bake first off you, please? Just bake. And baking up three chips, yeah? Yeah. We need three chips and one tomato yeah. salad, please. Wait. Yeah. Good. Well done. Good. OK, well done. Well done. Hey, main course, it's bloody difficult to get out like that, you know. Well done, yes? I drew in a few more people. How'd it go for you? I don't know why. Thank you for being honest. I thought it went terrible. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Really bad. You really do have a problem talking to individuals, you know that? And today was a disaster. Yeah? I'm sorry, it really was a disaster. If you ever get your own restaurant one day, make sure you haven't got any more than fucking five seats, because you won't be able to manage, you know that? And so we've got to now work on this in the next couple of days and stop you being a cook and look at the important role of becoming a chef. There are still problems in the kitchen, but I just don't understand why there are so few customers. These days, they serve around 300 customers a week. The previous owner, Franco, used to serve 800. I'd love to know what happened to the missing 500. Have you heard of the Walnut Tree? Yes. Oh, yeah. When was the last time you were there? It was Franco's last meal, just yeah. before he worshipped Yeah. Have you ever heard of the Walnut Tree? It's overpriced. Overpriced. And how many times were you there? Oh, very, very frequently when he was there, because he was open all hours. You mm -hmm. could turn up at 11 o'clock at night and be assured of a very good welcome. Do you think he's yeah, missed yeah. now? Now that he's I no longer so. there? I think so. They're not as good. Not recently, since it's been taken over, no. Since Francesca took over the Walnut Tree, nine new restaurants have opened nearby. If people think his place is too expensive, they've got plenty of cheaper alternatives. Morning, ladies. So we've been there when Franco. Mm -hmm. It seems to be everyone's favourite in Abergavenny, Franco and Anne. They always seem to be the darlings of Abergavenny. Yet no one's been since Francesca took over three years ago. Maybe there's a lesson to be learned. If your customers won't pay top whack, cut your prices. Otherwise, they'll eat elsewhere. And you come down to the platter you think, Jesus, there's that a typing error, 70 quid. It is somewhat a little bit intimidating because it's so expensive, which puts people off. And have we gone up in price over the last three years? Have we got more and more expensive? Yeah, probably the plateau for the mayor was 55, 60. 60, wasn't it? 60. And then I... I push it to 65, and only in the last two months I put it to 70, because mm -hmm. the price of the fish is going up and up. Mm -hmm. As usual, Francesco thinks he knows best. Difficult? But I won't give him a bollocking in front of his team. Anyway, just now, I've got other fish to fry. There's still no head chef. So far, I think Stefano and Gary are the best candidates. But Francesco just won't consider them. Is that, it's, uh, He's got to be realistic. He's in the middle of Wales, not London. Mm -hmm. Straightforward. And if we don't find anyone as good as Gary, or we don't find anyone as good as Stefano, then you know, we're going to look at what we've got internally. 
Uh, no? well, uh, well, no, I think that I think we need uh, somebody really from outside. Mm -hmm. In inside, it, internally, I can only be the one. Francesco just doesn't see it. But Fresh, Gary and Stefano have talent, parsley. and I'm going to show him. They're ready to go, yeah? The only way I'll get him to try their food is to make him believe that I've cooked it. Really important tomorrow night. Yeah. Big night for you. Um, Francesco doesn't believe that you're capable of um, becoming the chef. I think you are. It's your half hour. So have you thought about your dishes? Think of an oyster starter mm -hmm. with like a herb crust of gratin on the top. Mm -hmm. For a main course, I was thinking a, a meat of some sort, like a, I don't know, a fillet with some, some shallots. Mm -hmm. um, so important. We'll do service. Yeah. Then at the end of service, we'll sit them down and bang, you okay. let rip. Sure. Fuck, you let rip. Yeah. Big time. Uh, right, Stefano, let's go. The crap in the kitchen about the delegation, the lack of direction. Yeah, we can work on that. That's workable. But this is your half hour of magic. All right. Think about it. Yeah. And, 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 and make sure you utilise that time and come up with something magical. And then we'll sit him down for dinner and we'll say, eat the following. This is me. This is me on a plate. Yeah? All right. Hard on material. How do you okay. say erection in Italian? Erection. <laughs> Erezione. Erezione. <laughs> okay, erezione. <laughs> Domani. Okay. Grazie. Grazie. Erezione. <laughs> Fuck me. It's a posh word for an erection. As well as preparing their meals, Gary and Stefano must do their normal kitchen duties. Straight away, Stefano starts working with the team. But Gary, he's only interested in his own meal. Even I think that's too ambitious. Uh, Gary. Two seconds. You've had a bit more time on your hands this yeah. morning to get ready. Yes, um, sir. He hasn't done anything for tonight, swap so in. we swap over, yeah? Yeah. Okay. OK? So once all these vegetables cooked, then yes. I want you in the kitchen. Sure. Concentrate on tonight's service, concentrate on the canapes for tomorrow night. Yeah. And then you take two hours. Yeah. Enough? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Two hours to get organised for tonight, yeah? OK. I really yeah. thought Gary had great potential to be a good head chef, but quite honestly, he doesn't give a fuck about his team. He just cares about himself. And selfish individuals don't make great head chefs. Francesco and Enrico think I'm the chef tonight. If Gary and Stefano hadn't prepared, it'll be my reputation that suffers. What's in here? Breadcrumbs. Huh? Cheese, Parmesan cheese, uh, parsley. Take five? Yeah. It tastes great. And Steph, what have you got? Uh, Stop being nosy, Gary. Yeah, you concentrate on your own food. Stop being nosy. That little rivalry there. It's not a yeah, it's not a competition at all. Don't be silly. Okay, inside is what? It's a duck and chestnut. Duck and chestnut. Yeah. Stefano's duck and chestnut ravioli shows real imagination. No, I like the um, the sweet. You, you feel you, you can taste something sweet. It's, that's nice. It's chestnuts. Mm. I like the way it's presented. And Francesco approves of Gary's oysters. Very nice. Stefano? Yeah. Gary? Yeah. Look. So far, so good. Clean place. For me, it's a sign of yeah, happiness. Yes? Clean place. Good. For the main course, Gary's cooked fillet steak and Stefano, sea bass. Nice. Both of you. Well done. Happy? A lot of. Yeah. Happy? Yeah. Oh, still can't even talk to me yet. Yeah. Right, go, Kevin. Whatever you do, don't drop those. Okay, well yep. done, guys. Yes? I like the colours. I'm sure I like the taste. Okay, um, Stefano, you ready with the pancakes? You're happy now, aren't you? Hey, I've never seen you so happy. <laughs> yeah? It's about bloody time, huh? Hi, guys. Stefano. Okay? Yes? Yes? Yes. Supper? Supper. I really like the ravioli. Of duck and chestnut? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I and like and the, everything else. Interesting. Mm -hmm. For me, yes. I would say most of the dishes they were exciting. I was interested in the, in the ravioli, uh -huh. which, uh, again, I found it exciting and very good, very yeah. nicely done. And the beef? Uh, and the beef, uh, I would have liked a half a dauphinoise underneath the beef. Some form of potatoes? Some form of potatoes mm -hmm. that would have banged the dishes up and balanced it out. Uh, don't take this the wrong way, but I didn't cook any dish. Right. Oysters, beef, yeah. sorbet. Yeah. Was this menu 24 hours ago? Yeah. Yes. 
Doug Ravioli, Seabass, and Pancakes were Stefano's. And because they weren't being interviewed during the week, because I think Francesco doesn't think they're good enough, I wanted them to cook three dishes each for you both to have dinner tonight. Yeah. So I didn't touch anything. Thank you very much, Steve, for your comments. Thank you. Thank you. OK, uh, Gary, two seconds. Stefano. Uh, well, that was interesting tonight. Yeah. All the dishes that you both done, yeah. he said, was capable of going on the menu. Oh, great. Because for me, it went very well. Both Thank of you. you came up Trump's. Yep. And if he wasn't going to consider you for the job, then I was. Yeah. It's day four. I'm halfway through my time at the Walnut Tree. Francesco, the owner, has been stubbornly resisting my suggestions. We still need to find a head chef. And with a £70 main course on the menu, I'm determined to make him lower his prices. If it continues being as quiet as it is, are you going to look to try and bring the prices down a touch to create something new about the walnut tree to get people back in here? No, I don't want to go down on, on, on the cheap side because but have you there got is any a fucking choice. I'm not talking about asking you to open the doors and become a happy eater. <laughs> they spent 37 years getting the business to where it is today. Of course. You're spending so three years and it's sadly on the decline. What I'm trying to say is yes. you bring a new traffic coming through the door yeah. and you tweak the prices to establish yeah, the confidence. And once you've got the confidence, then over a period of five or six years, yes, you turn the volume up on the justification of what you're doing. I'm not convinced. I would say I'm oh, not convinced. I'm oh, sorry. Well, it's, it's me. That's you me. shouldn't be so stubborn. Absolutely. Try I, it. Saying, it's Just... Bit... Gordon, go, yeah, but go on. Gordon, Gordon. If you've got the go food on. and those customers are coming through the door and they're generating sales, the acid... Is the, is the wine. Is the wine. Which, who can sell that? Me. Excellent. So the chances are far greater to do it that way than to do it the way you're doing it currently. In a way, yes, yes. Fucking hallelujah. Welcome back. Yeah, welcome back. Where the fuck have you been? <laughs> Where have I been? Go in. The morning. Please try it. Well, I'll do it. I'll do it, mate. No Please? Problem. No problem. Thank God Francesco's finally agreed to one of my ideas. And there's more good news. At last, a candidate for the head chef's job with a good pedigree. Well, yeah. And you feel now at the age of 26 that you've worked in the last two establishments as a sous chef, you're now ready for your first head chef's job. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of getting to the point where I'm in the kitchen. I'm, I've got my own ideas, the, the way I want to run things. Um, OK, obviously some um, butter mushrooms, rocket, gorgonzola, green mustard, garlic, some fresh um, tagliatelle, parmesan cheese. See you in 15 minutes. Hey. Thank you, Spencer. A bit of tomato salad, the tagatelli of mushroom, sort of like carbonara almost, the linguine, and I'm thinking like like roquefort and um, rocket salad sat on top. If I've got time. <laughs> Don't expect anybody to come in in uh, 12 minutes and shout the time out. Spencer Ralph has travelled all the way from London. This would be his first head chef's job, but he has worked in a Michelin-starred restaurant. He looks strong. Mm. Impression is yeah. good. Yes. I like the idea of being 26, someone young, someone vibrant, someone you can push. Certainly. Yeah, definitely so. Mm. So, at 26, if, if he's not hungry now, mm. when? He's never going to be here. Yeah. Thank you. It's a, a rocket and tomato salad mm -hmm. with mushroom carbonara and poached haddock. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. It looks neat. Yeah. Yeah. Flavors there. Mm-hmm. Take the telly. Looks nice. Mm -hmm. It's not. Um, it looks beautifully cooked. It's not stuck together. It's mm -hmm. not congealed. Um, He's listened to the brief. He's kept it simple. Yeah, yeah. What he has shown in the last 15 minutes, the guy can cook. No, the flavors are there. Ah, the flavors yeah. are there. Exactly that. Right. Sit down, Spencer. How do you feel running the establishment um, with a Michelin star? It's a little bit daunting, mm -hmm. you know, to do it the first time. But the scale? I'm, I'm, yeah, a little bit, but mm -hmm. I, I'm also, you know, it's what I've always sort of aimed for. It's always what I wanted, you know, and I sort of feel confident as well as scared at mm -hmm. the same time. Thank you very much. Thank you. I hope Thank Spencer you. accepts the job. If he can start work yes. soon, there's a slim chance the walnut tree can save its Michelin star. Almost everyone is looking happier. And it's so important to find the right person to gel with those two guys, especially Gary, yeah? Because oh. there you've got one little ballsy Rottweiler that really wants this job, and you're not prepared to give him the opportunity. No. I 
hope we found a great head chef. Now, I want to change the atmosphere in the dining room. It's too cold and formal. We need to bring back some of the rustic charm that people loved in the old days. Let's hope Francesco agrees. It's the first reaction I would say, no, but uh, flexible. In the kitchen, I want to see more energy and more get up and go. Stay on focus. So when Gary wants to say something to you, you're up here listening, ready to say yes or no, not on the floor. Cockroaches live on the floor. You're not a fucking cockroach. Even with that hairstyle, you're still not a cockroach. Ten on. Shots in first. Lightning season. Everyone Carrots. needs to know when the food's good enough to leave the Mix kitchen. Even Blakey. And I saw you taste nothing lunchtime. Cook in, in and out of microwave like an absolute fucking donkey. But not cook. You won't actually taste anything. No. You're just pressing buttons, take it out, put it onto the plate. It's got the Michelin star, this establishment. You're going to have to learn how to taste properly and understand what a balance of flavour is about. We're going to make a chef for you, you know that. Yeah. If it kills me, we're going to make a chef for you, you know that. Good. How the fuck how, I don't know, but I'm thinking about it now, yeah? Kevin's been here years, so he can tell me if the atmosphere is more like it used to be. Uh, this looks nice. And it's just breaking it up, and it's not just a dull old yeah. boring. Yeah, less starchy. It's, it's been like it for years. Less clinical. Have you done any? Oh, yeah? Yes. Yes, yeah, been all good. Yep. Um, Apparently, people clinical. used to come for lunch and stay for hours, and spending what? even more money. We need to get back that relaxed family feeling. Ah, God, what a difference. A big difference. And cosy, which is yeah. the most important thing, yeah, and that's what was missing. Welcome, isn't it? Yeah, more Thank welcome, yeah. yeah. Looks fantastic. Uh, be really Kevin's fun. done a great job redecorating. Yeah. We need one yeah. last touch to restore those old traditions, <laughs> if Francesca will agree to it. And do you know what I think the Endros needs? A picture of you and Franco. <laughs> no, the old generation passing on to the, the, the new generation. I think Francesca's finally seen the light. Day six, and despite the hangovers, it's straight back to business. Today is a big day. The walnut tree is 40 years old this month, and Francesco's thrown a party. I think he should invite Franco and Anne, the previous owners. They're a vital part of the restaurant's history. There is one thing I want you to do for me, yes. which you're not going to like. I know you're not going to like it because you're going to um, disagree, but I really think it's important. Um, I want you to bring Franco back and I want you to talk to him. I can see already in your face you don't want to do it. I don't have to say anything. My expression says, says yeah. everything, I think. The first minute Franco walks in here, it will silence the rumours and it will cut the bullshit out and it will start encouraging the locals to come back. The message is telling him that you want to maintain what he's built. That's what I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for the reputation of the world three more than mine. Franco and Anne, we're here for 37. Yep. Yep. Yes, Francesca's been here for three. 37 plus three is 40, yeah. Massive celebration, huge celebration. 40 years of history. Yes. I'm going to put it back on the map, lift it, and alongside that, I think there's 80, 90 guests coming along. Yep. We have really nice, exciting canapes. Stefano. Yep. Can you quinell? Can you quinell? Give me an answer straight away. Don't take two week holiday yeah. between. Not that nice, but... Not that nice. We're going to learn again. Right, yes. watch. As quick as you can. In, twist the spoon round. Before it cools down. Before it cools down. And then heat the chocolate mousse. Back with the palm of your hand again. Yeah, and then it slides off. Yeah. That's good. That's it. OK, Stefano, go. Go, go. Not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. Not bad. For the first time, not bad. Not bad. A little bit too much on there. Right, again, again. Oh. Over the last few days, I've yeah. realised that Stefano is really talented. It's a shame he's just so shy. Oh. In? And out. Oh, 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 that's good. That's very good. Right, Gaza. Good turn. Yeah. In? And out. Oh. Too slow. Oh. <laughs> and again. <laughs> and then come here. Don't throw the towel in so early. In and out again. So far, Stefano's beaten you. On the other hand, Gary thinks he's the dog's bollocks, but he's not nearly as good a cook. Yeah, Gary, yeah, we'll be so kind. Yeah, please, don't put your dicks in my <laughs> Stay there. And I've done, I've got this hat made specially, you know that? Now you're at home. Now you can cook your heart out, your hair's perfect, all nice and spiky, and all the girls never give any. Still want to shag you. Tonight's party is make or break for Francesco. He's on the verge of going bust, and he must start filling the restaurant again.
Good yeah, looking was... bastard. A bit, you know, it's obviously, it's going to be a very emotional evening uh -huh. for, for me and, uh, and the rest of the uh -huh. customer that is going to come here. And for one, especially, Franco Tarusco yeah. and Anne. Um, Work it. I Work will. them. I will. It's your place this time, and you're proud to show this off. Well, certainly, Anne. Huh? After all these, yes. Francesco's invited 80 of the great and good of Abergavenny. Everyone's just got to love everything. And if they tell all their friends the food is as good as ever, then Francesco could soon serve 800 people a week, just like the good old days. Right, just run it through me, run it through me. Mm -hmm. What were that? Ricotta, ricotta tart. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> get out there, get out, get out, get out. <laughs> Good. Are they going well? Yes. What's the feedback? They're all loving it. They're all loving it? Yeah. yeah. We've all been waiting for Franco and Anne to arrive. Hopefully this will prove that Francesco is carrying on the traditions they established at the walnut tree. I would love to, but as I'm going out to dinner tonight, I don't know. No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm very glad that you came here, both of you, and uh, to celebrate this special event for both of us. For all of us. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Yes. Shall we do it together? Yes. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> I wish I was 40. <laughs> It's been a terrific night. I just hope it marks the start of the Walnut Tree's revival. I just wanted to say thank you very much, everybody, because uh, without you, it wouldn't have happened. And uh, I really appreciate your hard work. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you all. Thank you. And Gordon, of course. Thank you. On my final day, another Hi, breakthrough. Spencer's, Spencer's accepted the head chef's job. OK, Spencer, thank you very much indeed. Bye. Bye for now. Have you sounded excited? Yes, very much so. Yes. And I'm excited too yeah, to see. Fantastic. That's quite uh, refreshing. It's a relief, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I was very happy. Very happy. Excellent. Good. There's only one more thing Francesco needs to sort out. With Spencer arriving as head chef, there can only be one second chef. Stefano or Gary. One can stay, but one must go. Gary's so ambitious. I'm not sure he'd give Spencer the support he needs. How would you feel if you brought in a new head chef now? Well, I mean, I'm, like I said before, I'm not upset about it, but um, if, Fran if Francesco feels the need to do it, then I'm glad going to learn for whoever comes in if they've got something to teach me. Mm -hmm. But then again, if, if, they're, if they're no good or if they're just as slow or, or awkward to work with the Stefano, mm -hmm. I'm just going to push on and mm -hmm. still get ahead of them and prove him wrong, pretty much. And so even if a new chef came in... I'm still going to give him a run for the money, yeah. yeah. Franco. What Spencer needs in a number two is a chef who combines teamwork and cooking ability. A new chef may be arriving. Right. Yeah. It is clearly obvious that both you and Gary can't stay. One of you will yeah. have to go. And I yeah. think you should stay. Well, I'm um, to say that. Uh -huh. <laughs> and when the new head chef arrives, I think it's going to be a good recipe for success. But we yeah. need to keep that authenticity of that Italian style, that rustic feel of the walnut tree. That's you. I don't know what, what will happen. Um, mm -hmm. well, well, you want to stay here, don't you? Well, I would like to stay here. Uh, it, it's a, something changed here. It's a hard decision. Though Gary and Stefano both have things going for them, I'm convinced Stefano would make a better second mm. chef. But will Francesco agree? I doubt it. Well, that was interesting. Yeah. One thing I have learned over the last few days is they can't work together. Uh, right. Total impossibility. Yeah. Okay. Definitely, definitely not. But they can cook and they can put food on the plate, but 
coming together as a team, you know, they haven't got yeah. enough respect for one another, but one will have to go. Okay. One definitely has to go. My, my, my big concern is Gary is not a team player, but someone like Stefano would sit and be a great number two. You've worked with them both, yeah? Which one would you have to get rid of? Well, uh, in, in this case, uh, I have to go for Gary. Mm -hmm. At last, Francesco and I agree on something. Stefano should stay as Spencer's number two, and Gary should go. I'll leave Francesco to sort that one out. I'm off. Hi, guys. Hi. You guys. Continue talking. All right. Yes, don't stop. You stay out of the kitchen, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Continue working on those customers. Yes, I will. Yeah. Keep on talking to Franco. That means. Yeah. Good man. I'll be back in a month's time. Okay. Um, just before I go, one little present. Very good. Yes. A special gift. Okay. One of those filthy barnacled mussels they served me on my first day. Yeah, sure. Bye, guys. See you in a month's time. Thanks a lot. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Grazie. It's February, and I'm back in Wales to visit the Walnut Tree Inn. A month ago, I spent a week here trying to turn things around. And let me tell you, it was a hell of a week. Jesus go on, go on, yeah, go on. I found a renowned restaurant going bust. Boy. Very boring. It needed a new head chef. Very rare a joke like that can cook. Very rare. Mm. Hard graft in the kitchen. You shut it, OK? Back in your corner and listen to what's going on. Do you hear what I said? Do it. Cheaper food. Jesus. Is that a typing error? 70 quid. And more customers. It was in danger of losing his illustrious reputation, not to mention his precious Michelin star. It's not a Michelin star this establishment. You're going to have to learn how to taste properly and understand what a balance of flavours about. Now I'm back to see what's changed. The 2004 Michelin Guide was published a few weeks ago. Sadly, the walnut tree lost its star. Yeah, very well. Sorry to hear about the Michelin star. Yeah. Big blow, that one. We're getting it back. We're going to get it back. Mm. Quickly go see the boys. Yeah. Spencer? Yep. Parma ham, one stuff, well done. Spencer's been here for two weeks, but with no head chef for nearly a year, it was pretty obvious they'd lose their star. Hi, Spencer. Morning. You okay? You well? Yeah, not too bad. Settling down? Yes, steadily. Yeah. Steadily. Bring that one over. So now the question is, does Spencer have the ambition to win it back? What about the Michigan star? Well, it's less pressure because now I just got to get back. Now okay. you can really stamp your yeah. mark on it. You can now rebuild it um, yeah. and take the praise for it down the line, as opposed least, to yeah. At least I can say then it's mine and I've not taken it over. Or... And gives you a chance to change things as well. Yes. Because yeah. nothing's set in yeah. stone now. Sure. Yeah. Nice. Very good. Huh? Looking very clean, very vibrant, and um, table 15. Yes. That looks lovely, huh? Two salmon lunch, two no starters, two roast beef, one fish cake, one lasagna. They're all lunch. That's a small one, yeah. Small lasagna. Has he managed to stay out of the kitchen? Um, yes. And he hasn't come in with his jacket on. Not yet. <laughs> That's good news. You don't want him back in the kitchen, do you? No, no, no. That's why I've made desserts more difficult, so he, he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. That's why I had to change the menu straight away. One soup, one mozzarella, two chicken. Both lunch. It's moving, eh? Hey, vivant, vibrant, action, eh? Hey. Kevin? No? Yeah. Kevin, sorry, just come back. Chatting, um, communication. And then just a drizzle of lemon oil. Fantastical. Of course, it's fantastic. Uh, food's looking nice. Food is looking nice, and we're improving every day. So. It, it feels more together already in that short period of time because he's commanding the kitchen. They follow him. That's the most important thing. The oranges, because the wedges. I'm surprised to see Gary still in the kitchen. I thought he was too ambitious to fit in. Have you been told off yet? Uh, no. I can't fucking wait to hear how that goes down. You know that. Well, now we're going to. Actually, I was late. I was late for work. You were late. Yeah. And did he give you a bollocking? Oh, yes. He pinned me to the floor and beat me up. Fantastic. Fantastic, fantastic. It turns out Stefano's the one to leave. He said he's found the changes hard to take. I'm quite jealous of Spencer because he's allowed to do everything. And things that I couldn't even think about it when I just arrived. And uh, that's one of the things that makes me go away because it's it's painful for me to, to see what's going on.
I wonder how Gary feels about Stefano's decision to leave. So, um, Stefano's leaving? Yeah. Was that you who pushed him out? No, it wasn't me that pushed him out, no. I see it as if um, Spencer's been given the opportunity to do whatever he likes. Change the menu, rearrange the kitchen. Mm -hmm. He's been given all the opportunities and he'll be able to go ahead with it. Yeah, which is a bit of a surprise. Which is a bit of a surprise. Uh, Francesco never let Stefano do any of that. He always had a say in what was going on and how, the, how everything developed. Yeah. Uh, now, I see Spencer doing all these different things now and I see Stefano, how hard it was for him yeah. to actually take control of the kitchen. Yeah. It was difficult. Does that upset you? It hasn't upset me so much. I think it's upset Stefano more than me. Mm -hmm. But you were stronger than Stefano. Yes, yeah, some, some of us got to survive than the others. Mm -hmm. Sorry, there's no room. I'm genuinely sorry that Stefano's leaving. But I'm thrilled Francesco's back where he belongs. Charming the customers. The dining room's busy and vibrant, just like the old walnut tree. Now I'll make sure you put this on the wall. Look, a nice little yeah. momentum. So when the customers come through, they can see those four happy, smiling faces. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There is a new force in the kitchen, in other words, a new, and a new force outside, because that's, that's where I belong. Being outside and be able to explain and be confident in what I'm explaining to the customers. Regain that confidence that was once lost. Bye-bye, thank you very much. Arrivederci. I really do hope that this place gets back to where it was. It's a phenomenal restaurant. You've got a great owner, beautiful dining room, great kitchen, and let's get it back on track. Yeah? And Spence, what do you want to do over the next two years? What's your ambition at the Walnut Tree over the next two years? To uh, beat the reputation it had before. You're 26 years of age. I was 26 when I got my first head chef job. And now at the age of 37, 11 years on, it was the most important job in my entire life at the age of 26. So good luck. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yes. See you later. Bye, guys. The future's definitely looking brighter for Francesco. If he sticks to what I told him, he can make the walnut tree famous again and win back that Michelin star. This week, I'm trying to save more place restaurants. Oh, fuck it, man. The dining room's empty. Where is everybody? And the food is shocking. That's a Yorkshire pudding. That is a pile of shit. I'll have to deal with possibly the worst waiter in the world. Oh, Zach, I'm fucked. A crazy Frenchman. You're being a little fucker again. <laughs> and a chef obsessed with deep fat fryers. If Mark hangs on again about the justification to why I should accept that he cooks 99% of his food in a fucking deep fat fryer, I'll put one up his ass sideways. I'm about to drop pee. Isha in the home counties. Full of stockbrokers, ladies who lunch, and golfers. 35,000 rounds of golf are played every year on Isha's More Plays golf course. That should be more than enough to keep the attached restaurant full. But none of the golfers ever go, nor does anyone else. I've never seen such a sorry looking dining room. I have just a week to turn the place around, and that's a tall order. Jesus Christ, a mighty monstrosity. Um, first impressions, yeah. Um, yeah. I'd turn it into an open prison for young offenders, because it looks fucking ghastly. My God. I think this could be my toughest job yet. I've come to try out the food. More purple. Everywhere. But the place is deserted. Looks like I'm dining alone. Not a good sign. God knows what they're going to serve me. The camembert? Deep fried camembert. Have I gone back in time? Dear Lord, for what we're about to receive, may I not be poisoned for the fourth time in four months? Amen. Jesus. It reminds me of rancid fish fingers. That's disgusting. Thank God I've got some wine to wash it down. God, dear, oh dear. It absolutely stinks. It's caught. Where is everybody? Still, at least I can be sure no one's watching me. Mm. Next up, huge, huge duck a l'orange. I have gone back in time. It's the culinary equivalent of flared trousers. Is the meal all right, then? 
Mm. This duck tastes like it grew up in the 1970s. It's not exactly fucking tender. Is it popular, the dish? Duck and orange? Not really. No. Have a little taste. <laughs> it's quite tough, no? That's really difficult to mm. eat, yeah. I know. You sure we always spit out? <laughs> no. Are you going to swallow? No, I don't know. water? It's still in there. Mm-hmm. You're still chewing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Don't swallow it. <laughs> Horrible food. No wonder this place is in trouble. Clueless. Completely clueless. But on the verge of being embarrassing. Hmm. So what do you think about your meal tonight? En anglais or français? En anglais. I'm lost for words. Almost. Merde. Well, at least I wasn't poisoned. So I've come back to meet the owners of this 1970s nightmare. Try to be nice. Huge place. Richard Hodgson and Nick Whitehouse have sunk all their money into this place, and it's been a disaster. It's like an old country house hotel, isn't it? Like a... well, historically, it was someone's house. This empty room will be costing them nearly £100 an hour for staff and overheads. Oh, your potential is it's fantastic. It's got character. Yeah. It used to be a successful Bernie Inn in the days when steaks were posh. They used to do 200, 250 covers a day here, valet parking. It was, it was probably, probably the last time it took his real money, wasn't it? Was it was probably the only restaurant on the high street. Yeah, absolutely. Aren't they ashamed to be still serving the same food from the Bernie Inn days? And who's got the food background? I mean, who grew up? Neither of us do. Our, no, backgrounds, no. our backgrounds drink. Um, right. I spent 15 years in the licensed trade. Richard sacrificed everything to buy this place. If I can't help him, his family could be homeless. I should have done this in my 20s when I didn't have children and didn't have uh, a huge mortgage and, and everything else. We both sat there and thought, shall we do it, shan't we do it, and a few dark nights and we thought maybe it's a bit risky and there's a lot of risk involved for us both. Nick's put everything he's got into the business as well. Running a restaurant is completely different from selling drinks. No wonder the kitchen is such a nightmare. I hope the best. Hervé was a French head chef when they took over. But no one liked his cooking including me. We gave people some shocking experiences, I think it's safe to say. Well, we, we taught them what the extremes were like. People can be quite emotional about food and you've ruined my life, that type of thing. I know how they feel. Um, engine room, kitchen? Yeah. yeah. Good afternoon, Let's everybody. meet the rest of the kitchen team. And Mark Robinson. Mark Robinson calls himself the executive chef whatever that means. So you were head chef somewhere else before we came here? I trained as a chef and then um, became very disillusioned and went off and got an IT and business degree. Gave up cooking for a business degree. Doesn't sound very passionate about food to me. He was brought in to sort things out, but all he's done is spend thousands of pounds on microwaves and fryers and piss Hervé off. Uh, come on, strawberry French man. <laughs> Hervé, enchanté. Enchanté. Je responsable quel poste alors? Uh, and the tattoo. Good. And he said he doesn't like you. <laughs> <laughs> there are two people in the dining room. Let's see if their lunch is as bad as my dinner. Almost everything seems to be deep fried, and the oil smells like it hasn't been changed for months. When you walk through the restaurant, the first thing you can smell is like a um, tainted sort of fried smell. Fried smell. Yeah. Almost a little bit like hospital food. Yes. Chef, why is there an anchovy fillet in the salad de soise? It's like carrying of the salad de soise, but it's their own. How many new potatoes around? Uh, only one. One new potato? Yeah. Fucking hell, for £9.50. Any olives? Uh, no. Nothing's ready here. No beans cooked, no eggs cooked. What the fuck is going on? Or are we just in the shit because we've got two customers for lunch? This kitchen is a nightmare. Mark was brought in to update the food, but I can't see what he's done. How can he get away with a menu like this? And how would you um, how would you describe the style, the food? Um, it's um, the, the 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 a la carte stuff that we do. It's very um, it's very much here's a steak and three sauces you can have with it. It's not a great it's not a massive detraction from what they were serving before here. And three sauces are what? 
uh, brandy and mushrooms, Stilton and bacon, and a peppercorn. Jesus. Those three um, sauces sound a little bit Bernie-ish. Well, they are. I mean, this is the thing. It's a bit. It's a bit 1976. Mm. You can say that again. A little nuke sauce. Straight out the microwave. Still in the mushroom. It's an insult to cooking. Oh, in a bag. Damn. No wonder we need so many fucking microwaves. Hervé. Thank fuck, I'm not hungry. Sorry. Parsley. Hey, come on. Wouldn't be the same without parsley. Come on, get it on there. There you go. Good old Bernie. I know you love your parsley. And so far, they need a fucking rock up their ass because if they continue the way they are doing now, it's gonna go down like a sack of shit. And quite frankly, I don't think they actually care about customers. And every dining room needs to care about customers. Otherwise, they don't come fucking back. It's my second day in Isha, where I'm trying to help the Moore Place restaurant and golf club. The food's stuck in the 70s. Mm. As usual, there are no customers. Today, how many booked for lunch? None. Nothing. And tonight? None. So. But we did have someone come in to look at the restaurant. It's either here or TGI's. Fucking hell. I'd rather go to TGI's. Mark Robertson, the executive chef, should be tearing his hair out. But he's taking the day off. Chickens. But you look different out your whites. You look like a monk on leave. <laughs> Thanks. I'm going to play golf later. Oh, I see around. Going to play golf. We're supposed to be running an empty restaurant to get it off the ground, to get it moving towards something semi decent. Not fucking around on a golf course. At least he knows there's something wrong because he's hired a new head chef. Now there are three. Talk about too many cooks. One's a joke Frenchman, the other's stuck in the 70s. I hope Andy Trowell's from the 21st century. You've really got your work cut out there. I know. And I you know. can't go in with all guns blazing, booting them all in the ghoulies <laughs> in the first 24 hours. You'll have no, no one left. I know, I know. How would you how would you play this situation? Narrow the menu down to yeah. begin with. Yeah. Start off really simple. Yeah. Um, and, and, and look what's going on locally. Andy looks promising, but I'll have to show him what he's up against. What is that, Andy? Huh? It looks like something out of the night. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Jesus, right, painful. It's like a dehydrated silicon implant. <laughs> Actually, it's a microwave frozen deep fried burger. What is that? This is a salad. Looks like a plate of worms. Kind of breaks my heart when I see this shit, you know that. Hey, mate, do you think that's nice? Yeah, it's not bad. And he's worked at some really good places. He's going to need all his experience. I know. I know it's instantly some bolognese sauce in a jar. They don't use that, though, do they? I wouldn't like to we'll, say. We'll ask um, our executive chef, Mark, on that French one. He's as shocked as I am by all this ready-made packet food. Lazy cooking, it and it's more yeah. expensive than making it fresh. And you smell that? That's what the smell is downstairs yeah. in the dining room. Yeah. Mm, I mean, pizza. on a Sunday, I bet you can smell it all over the building. Jesus Christ, right down each your street. <laughs> no wonder there's no fucking customers. Hervé. Yes. You're being a little fucker again. <laughs> How can we have a Frenchman here? We're buying French dressing. Room. <laughs> little fucker. <laughs> I'm impressed so far with Andy. Know, so he seems keen to make changes. And this, Jerry. Yeah, this is what I want to get away this from. Is... And they put it on the menu as Brussels pate or Brussels something. Brussels with chicken. Yeah, it's just plastic crap. Yeah. No, they're definitely left on the burning in. Fucking hell. Frozen Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> Oh, lovely. Andy could be the chef I've been looking for. Them. And that means I can get out of the kitchen and work with the owners. It looks like a deceased bridge club. Why spend £10,000 painting the building a horrible colour and nothing on improving the food? The reason for doing it was to show people that the place had changed hands, that it was very different. Yeah. At night, though, we lighted it up with purple lighting. It looks fantastic. Very, very but it has different. probably alienated some of our old core business. Most important thing is to focus on the food and get the food up to where it should be, what we should be offering local, uh, how we should be um, selling the food mm -hmm. um, and, and, and bringing in a bit of a bit of a bargain. I'm taking Richard down the high street to find out where his ex-customers are eating. I can't believe how close together all the restaurants are. Yeah, really, really. On one high street. Isha's made up of wealthy city types, ladies at lunch, and surprisingly, thousands of Americans who work for a big conglomerate in the area. And um, red peppers. Yeah, it's absolutely packed in there. Yeah. It was just ladies there. Uh, actually drinking champagne. Yeah, spend by head. Uh, lunch. Yeah. 15, 15, 20 quid. 15, 20 quid, but it's churning all the time, you know. There's a good example. Yeah, very good. 
Richard's a businessman, and I want him to see how much money these places are taking. There are 23 restaurants on the high street, so competition is fierce. But I bet most people don't even know there's a restaurant at Moore Place. Quick challenge. I'm going to ask a family. I'm going to stop them and say, have you heard of Moore Place? Yep. Do you know what it is? Do you know where it is? Um, come and try us for lunch. Have you heard of Moore Place? No? Has you heard of Moore Place? Not. You haven't. You heard of more place? Yeah, Up the road there. Have you been? Have you used the place before? No, I don't know the cover of it. You don't? You don't? <laughs> it strikes you as being an eyesore. Another purple building there. It's a funeral director. You didn't copy that, did you? <laughs> what, more place? Yes. Well, before they painted it, um, a strange colour. <laughs> right. You're, you're not a fan of the colour? No. If we paint it differently tomorrow, would you come back next week? Yes. There they go. <laughs> I've got to get I'll get two brushes. You can have one of them and I'll have the other. <laughs> so, in a survey on the colour, <laughs> I think this trip's opened his eyes to the potential of his own restaurant. And it's given me an idea for the new menu. The plan is to give the restaurant a new direction and get people talking about more place. Now, you know, the deep fried shit has to go, and um, the parsley around the plates and the chopped tomato, and that, that, that's fucking 70s crap at its best. Um, Gordon, I have no desire to spend the rest of my working day smelling of fat. There's, there's you know, thousands of Americans that live locally that. Um, is a, the most amazing market to tap into. Mm, right. There's no reason why you can't have, not an American-themed restaurant, but an American influence, but get the place famous for two or three dishes. Sure. When someone's driving past, they say, oh, Christ, look, there's more place. You know, they've got the best burger in Isha. Yeah. Who gives a shit? It's a talk point, whether it's the best burger, whether it's the best chowder. Yeah. It doesn't matter. But as usual, Mark has a problem. My concern is how that would go down with um, any of the older clientele that we've got. Okay. Is, no, it, is that keeping the business afloat? No, no. No, there you go. No disrespect. Yeah, I've gone into restaurants before where everyone's been nervous about the existing old farty, boring <laughs> bastards that sit there and take a two-week holiday in between courses and, and dribble throughout. <laughs> the Viagra coming with a coffee. Oh, okay. No. We're looking for new, vibrant, young, exciting customers that are going to be loyal to this place for the next ten years. Sure. Can we fuck off in the kitchen now? Yes? Absolutely. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Stay focused, One Direction, American-style cafe, upbeat, friendly service, bloody good food, um, and stick to it. And if Mark bangs on again about the justification to why I should accept that he cooks 99% of his food in a fucking deep-fat fryer, and to why they spent, what, £12,500 on six fucking microwaves, I'll put one up his arse sideways. Uh, why don't we do a couple of burgers up for uh, Richard and Nick? My organic burger, made with totally fresh ingredients, is miles away from Mark's deep-fried crap. Nothing wrong with a burger when it's done like this. Lovely. Oh, lovely. Welcome to proper cooking. And it's yeah. cheaper to make than bought-in silicon implants. Tomato chutney. It's a nice, raw cherry tomato chutney with shallots. I put a little bit of parmesan on, toast them. The celebration burger. Lovely. So far, Nick and Richard have shown little interest in the food they're serving. What's the verdict? That's that fantastic. Is Absolutely awesome. brilliant. And that is just, that's the talking point, that is. I ate at more place and the burgers are awesome. You've got to go there and have one. Fresh, meaty, isn't it? Just... And because Great. burgers are traditionally so badly done, what an opportunity to really excel. I can almost see them counting the money they could make with my American theme. Burgers and corned beef hash, pecan pie, peach melba, and smoked haddock chowder. The most important thing about this particular soup is, is that, you know, it's done up in the morning. Clam chowder made up, we're using potatoes, the clam juice to thicken it. We've gone a little step further and poached some quail's eggs. And then pour the chowder over the haddock, over the clams. The quail eggs still nice and runny inside. That's lovely. And you take a spoon, you think, oh, fuck it up. Mm. That's Moorish. The food is really coming together. This is the corned beef hash with hollandaise finished with pomeroy mustard. Not difficult at all. Not difficult at all. Exceptional. I really like it. Finally, we're getting somewhere. Now all we need is some customers. 35,000 golfers use this place every bloody year. You know that? Yeah. And there's a small percentage of them actually get in to that bloody restaurant through there. So the idea now is going around there, stalking them a little bit on the green and asking them to taste this amazing food. 
I'm taking Kim, one of the waitresses, and Andy to entice them in with the food. Morning, sir. How you doing? Would you like a quick burger? Yes. Sir, there we Thank are. Thank you very much. What in the, what's this in aid of? Uh, this is in aid of Andy. I'm this a new place. chef in the restaurant at Moore Place. Are you? We haven't used it. I haven't been in that place for three oh. years, four years, John. I used to come down this on a Sunday, and we booked a breakfast, and we had a tea booked. And they just took so long to get the breakfast there. Really? That's interesting. Well, our, we, we yeah. had to tee off and had to leave the breakfast, and I ain't been in there since. <laughs> Nick and Richard can't keep an empty restaurant going forever. We have to fill the dining room and make customers come back. This is a beautiful uh, mini hamburger with a nice, fresh tomato chutney on top, mm -hmm. uh, charcoal grilled. Uh, would you be so kind to have a quick taste and just give yeah. us a little insight? Yeah, pleasure. This what do you gorgeous. think? This is gorgeous. Your yeah, wife's going to go mad now. Look, he's put it all down your jumper. He can I wonder how many of these golfers are ex-customers. Mm. Toast the brand here now. Mm, yeah. Just trying to get uh, people into the restaurant, trying yeah. my good food. Is there a theme to your menu? Chowder, um, great burgers, corned beef hash, mm. uh, beautiful roasts, yeah. um, knickerbocker glories. Mm. Would you come back to the restaurant? Oh, we certainly would. Cheers. Thank you very much. There are three days of the year when all restaurants, however bad, are full. New Year's Eve, Valentine's Night and Mother's Day. What are you doing on Mother's Day? Well, that's a good point. It's Mother's Day this Sunday, and it could be make or break for more place. Or maybe book a table for Mother's Day. Perhaps this weekend. Sunday. Here, Campai. It's uh, slightly heavier on the run, which makes it a little <laughs> bit special. Right. This is nice. This yeah. is good, yeah. Possibly try us out one day? We will try you out. Thank Definitely. you. Yes. Three down, 34,997 to go. Hopefully, we've enticed some disgruntled customers back and made some new converts. My next task, to sort out the waiters. It's Friday night, and time is running out for practising on customers. All nine of them. It's Andy's night off, and so Mark's running the kitchen. Yeah, I just want them squared up straight. Peter, it's not square. It just square them up. So why is he in the dining room? I just want them straight. Tonight, I want to see if the waiters can push the new menu. On a bed of spinach topped with a fried egg. Oh, well, that that sounds great, actually. It is nice. I tried it yesterday. I've changed my mind already. Well done, Kim. One corned beef hash. Let's butter on the spinach next time. Okay, quick. Smoke head of chow. Which is a soup. It's with the, with the, with the. Uh, Come on, Peter. He's got haddock fish. He's got he's got. Uh, what was that egg? Quails egg. No, the customers know more than him. Can I have the camembert? Two of those, please. Oh God, they've ordered the camembert. That's it. What is that? Just that, hey. Zach looks so shy. I'm not sure he can walk and talk at the same time. Never mind, sell the new menu. There you go. That's it. How was your start to It's a bit cool. Yeah. Now things are going wrong in the kitchen as well. Mark can't even make the deep fried camembert. It's frozen. And I thought it was his speciality. Thanks, you too, Mark. Be better. Hey, I mean, it's melting, but they're full of fat now. If it's under ripe cheese, then it's going to be a lot harder to get running. Yeah. Even if you cook it from frozen, it's never going to go running because it's not ripe. Now the chef's gone into the dining room. That's pretty much one member of staff for every two customers. And there are no vegetables in the main course. And they need my help to serve them. How are they ever going to manage with more than nine customers? Uh, everything they've touched so far on see me. It's fucking overcooked, undercooked, unripened, deep-fried camembert. And, um, no pigs. I'm really worried. This dining room will be full on Sunday. There could be as many as 150 customers. We don't stand a chance. And if it continues to go like it is now, there'll be more fucking camembert inside the pot plants. Shocking. I mean, really fucking shocking. Dining room. Absolutely crucial. We can't do without you, and you can't do without us. And we've got to establish that teamwork, and we've got to come together as a team, and think together as a team, and then never forget the most important person is the customer. So it's a very straightforward exercise. Nick and I are going to arrive in the dining room for the first time. We've got a table booked for 1.30 for lunch today. Ready? Sit me down, present the menu, and sell me this restaurant. Here we go. Peter's been here for 15 and... years, so he should know what he's doing. 
Good Hello, afternoon, oh, yeah, Mr. Whitehurst. Nice to see you, Mr. Ramsey. <laughs> Long time to see you. I got a nice table for you. Yeah. Well, you can't fault his enthusiasm. Still a sparkling for both of you. Sparkling, please. Sparkling. Um, I'll have a beer actually. Just Kim's been a waitress for five years. Yeah. She's charming, yeah, but has no real yeah. training. A beer, bitter. Bitter. Okay. okay. The lamb, perhaps. Lamb, uh, yeah, I'm not, not too positive. Zach's only been here a week. Yeah, he knows nothing. Um, really nothing. Lamb. Where's it from, the lamb? I'm not too sure. Okay. Um, oh, soup of the day. Soup What's of that? the day. Not too sure either, I'm sorry. Right. And may I have some water, please? Still sparkling. Yes, yeah, still, please. Still, uh, fresh or. Fresh or. Oh, God. <laughs> Fresh off of the pond on the ninth green. <laughs> I would like you all to taste. They have less than 48 hours to master the new menu and be able to sell it to the customers. Mm. It seems like got bits of mussels in it. It's mm -hmm. not actual fish, is it? I'm not sure. Right. It's seafood. Yeah, it's it's in his seafood soup. It's got it's got some white fish there. It's got uh -huh. cockles, cockles, cockles. This is going to be harder than the kitchen. Creels. I used to work as a waiter, a and I'm soup. sure I can show them how it's done. Smoked haddock chowder, beautiful, creamy, soup and garnish with flakes of oat smoked haddock, finished with a wonderful poached quail egg. So, uh, nice beef chowder. Beef chowder, definitely not. We also have a special on today, clam chowder. The chowder. The chowder is a very nice uh, platter. Uh, it's very nice taste. Platter? No, platter, no. Nice, short, descriptive idea of the special. Clam chowder, very strong tasting. I'm turning fucking grey. They have to be the menu, go for the menu and what? Right, I'll, give, I'll give the menu to you. There you go. Okay, hold on a minute, let me just see what we got. Last time. Sharp tasting, got a special twist to it as we put a quail's egg in it. A quail's egg in it. Much better. Quail's egg in it, really good. Even my pubes are going grey. Garnished with the uh, oaks of haddock. Flake, I'm sorry, garnished <laughs> Can you cook? No. <laughs> this whole thing is theatre, and this restaurant has to become a showcase, and each and every customer is going to eat in here on Sunday, gearing up for a bloody busy day, has to remember you. Yes. And if they remember you and we serve good food, boy, are they going to come back. And, I'm and one last you. chance for Zach. Here we go. Right. I'm ready. This one I can feel in my bones. I can see how relaxed you are. You're looking good, you're cool, you're dude, and bang, give it to me. The, the smoked haddock chowder is a very nice dish. Um, it has a nice creamy, fishy garnished with flakes and a nice uh, smoked haddock in the middle. <laughs> it's been selling like hotcakes. It would be funny if it wasn't for Mother's Day. Oh, shit. We've well, only had like two days to prepare, though, so it's like... Oh, fucking hell, you got two days to prepare one fucking speech. I've got 24 hours to get a fucking ration ready. Zach. Zach! <laughs> I'm more than halfway through my time at Moore Place. The food's better, the waiters have improved, but without any customers, it's all a bit pointless. There are three days of the year when every ration should be full, even purple ones. New Year's Eve, Valentine's Day and Mother's Day. And Sunday is Mother's Day. Richard and Nick have been taking bookings, trying to claw back some money. Table plan. Good news is what? We've got 11 books. <laughs> no, we've got quite a bit more than that, but... Hit me with it. 181. Shit! Confirmed. I should be pleased, but I'm terrified. I thought we'd struggle with 150, but 181? Yeah, it's making me feel worried slightly. A bit ambitious? A bit ambitious, yeah. Mm. But just, you know, what we're trying to do and turning this place around... Just trying to get Taking up a division, in. yeah, and yeah. getting customers in here, but... And what worries me is that, you know, they're still not turned on. I think they're putting off more than they can chew with the amount of covers they want to do. I'm as worried as Andy, but I have an idea. Roast chicken, just like your mother used to make, but with a twist. Carved at the table to take pressure off the kitchen. You've cut a chicken before? <laughs> no. You've cut a chicken before? No. You've cut a chicken before? Many, many years ago. Many, many years ago. <laughs> yeah. Rich? At home, of course. Uh, Everyone's going to so, learn, so including like, the owners. One chicken each. JC, you thought you were coming down here for a round of golf. No, you're not. I want you to do a chicken. Buffet. Ready? Yeah. I've brought in JC, one of my best maitre d's. He knows everything there is to know about service and about carving a chicken. But that's, I mean, one, one of the so classic cutting uh, like we, we do. We First, cut off the legs. Then separate the drumstick from the thigh. Next, cut along the breastbone. Keep the knife close to the carcass and take off the breast. I will, I will leave the skin myself, yeah. I think it's nice also to leave the skin and the customer can do what, what he wants, yeah. So we do one breast, one, one leg. Turn the chicken over and remove the succulent oyster underneath. 
That's a nice little piece of meat. Voilà. Put it in on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And for the next four hundred Sundays, four pound fifty an hour. <laughs> no, no, we'll push the boats out this time. Four seventy-five. Man's got talent. Come on. Time for everyone to practice. First time for you? First time for me. Yeah? Chicken virgin. Oh, the arse. Oh, God, the arse. <laughs> Which is the arse? <laughs> the legs off first. And then you go onto the breast. The chicken has to be carved in three minutes, or the rest of the food will have gone cold. It doesn't really look like a chicken, really. It doesn't seem like a bit of bone. And you cut the leg beautifully. Cut the drove off, you've got the thigh there. Yeah, look, that's so, right. Yeah, that's done <laughs> brilliant. It's just, you're just having problems with the breast. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow they'll have to carve in front of the customers, and it'll have to look better than this. It's like the fucking fox has attacked it. The chickens are coming on, and it'll be so nice to have chickens carved at the table and yeah, getting sure. the waiters to take some pressure Brilliant. off our fucking shoulders on Sunday with gratin dauphinoise in a bowl yeah. on Lovely. the table. Yeah, yeah. Um, fresh peas, because yeah, it's just coming yeah. to season. Yeah, perfect. And yeah. so that's the major selling point yeah, for absolutely. the dining room. Yeah. And pecan pie. Instead of being positive about Mother's Day, Mark's worrying about old customers who are expecting the 1970s menu he's already sent out. The people that have booked have seen this. Yeah. Yeah, as long as they know they're going to get the beef, lamb, the chicken. The same graces. They may have seen the menu, but they haven't fucking tasted it. Yeah, absolutely. So that's one big fucking relief for me straight away. <laughs> I really want Mark to be right behind the changes. In respect to how many we got booked, we're going to be in the shit big time. Yeah. And, and if we can entice 25% of these customers on Sunday to return, you know... Well, we've got them. The, yeah, you've got them. They drink? The simple truth is that Nick and Richard have got no, greedy no. and overbooked. Yeah. Yeah. They have to learn to care for their customers. Do you think you're both now capable of running a restaurant? As you've said before, and as we've not made any bones about, we're not food experts, we're not restaurant operators. Our background's drink. Um, so we've undoubtedly got lots and lots to learn. No, uh, I think we need to be in here. Mm -hmm. Certainly in the short to medium term, we need to keep building our capability. If you are going to go a division and take it from strength to strength, you have to get firmer. Mm. I have to do it every day. Mm. Because there's a part of me that thinks, Christ, you nasty bastard. And now that you guys have physically, hands-on, I mean, really hands-on, it'd be so good to keep control of it. Hold tight to those fucking reins. If Richard and Nick are serious about getting stuck in, we could still get through Mother's Day. I'm going to take them at their word and give them some real work to do. I really wish I could repaint the building for tomorrow, but at least no. I can do something about the inside. The minute you walk in here, the first thing you look at is Christ, what are the entrance? A little bit disoriented because you're confused to where the restaurant is. At the moment, the customers are in danger of getting lost on the way into the dining room. Yep. Walk through, down to the right. And then when you come into here, it's such a lovely area here. And what I was thinking, see all these plants that side yeah. there? Let's get this over here, a little bit of screen. Yeah. Here, maybe one of those little Indian screens, sectioned off. And it just gives a nice, smooth, flow clear through, yeah. flow through. Yeah. If you don't catch them, they often feel, they often mill around here. Yep. It's like, it's almost a barrier. Disorientated. Yeah. Come through this door, walk in, first thing you see, horrible yeah. plastic coat rail. So the area outside the restaurant is just as important as inside. Very warm. Well. It's even more intriguing now than it is when you walk through to the... No, no, sir. What do you think? Wow, beautiful entrance. Yeah. Excellent. Where's the restaurant? Oh, it's just down here onto the right. There's that natural little follow snake. It, follow it. Yeah, you can follow it. Everything is ready for Mother's Day. Just one last test to see if Richard can carve the chicken in less than three minutes. Three minutes. <laughs> How are you feeling? <laughs> Have you started? No, no, yeah. No, no. <laughs> How am I feeling? Yeah. Overwhelmed. Well, we've started. Look at that. Have you even practised it? Only, only at home. Every, only at <laughs> Every hour of every minute of every day. <laughs> One minute to go. <laughs> He's done it. Rich is ready to face his customers. <laughs> Two minutes, 20. Well done. <clears throat> Can I just say that we've got 50 roast chickens for tomorrow to sell? Fucking hell, let me think. That's 100 legs that could go into <laughs> someone's lap, isn't it? <laughs> Morning, guys. The big day has arrived. And if we're going to give the diners a Mother's Day to remember, we'd better get cracking. Andy, how many chickens are going in? Six chickens down that, down that oven there. I've got a chicken in there, and then I've got that whole tray of chickens here. As well as roast chicken, 
Andy's cooking a ribeye beef with all the trimmings. And Hervé, he's in charge of the Yorkshire puddings. <laughs> Hervé! You cannot make Yorkshire pudding like this. Fucking hell. Not exactly how your mother made them. They're like bullets. Maybe you have to cook them longer as well. Yeah, yeah? And, and, and hotter to start off with, just to get them rising. Morning. Oh, you got 15 chickens. It'd be nice if you could do 10 of them. What, me personally? Yeah. Thanks for that. I'm going to start to think about chicken. <laughs> OK, here we go, Rebe. Yorkshire puddings. Yee! What do you reckon? 50-50. Fingers crossed. If my Yorkshire puddings rise, the kitchen will be almost ready. OK, Peter. Just one last pep talk for the waiters. I just want you to stop crashing around. Move around the dining room like a ballerina. And see that wonderful floor out there? You just treat that like it's Swan Lake, gliding in and out of all the tables. If we get this right, more plays will really take off. If not, we'll offend half the mothers in Isha. Oh, we shouldn't be under this pressure on fucking Mother's Day. Quick look. OK, uh, just stay there two seconds. No, no, no. No, no, no. Okay, no, no, okay. no, no, no. Does it get out of where you're blowing on them, knocking them down? Look at everybody standing here, away from my fucking Yorkshire. <laughs> Fuck off out of here! <laughs> oh, fucking hell! Where one more look, one more look. Just in case I was imagining things. No, Ready? No, Watch. No. <laughs> Ladies. Turn your burger There we go. Right, come here, please. Dear, oh dear. <laughs> OK, Regis. Yeah. Look, that's what I'm trying to explain. That's a Yorkshire pudding. That's a pile of shit. Yes? Right, where's that French little fucker? Come here. Hey, mate. End of story. OK, 50 minutes to go. First table's arriving at 12 o'clock. Quarter two. Um, yeah. Andy, do you want to leave from the kitchen? Yeah. OK. Um, starters. Smoked haddock chowder is a creamy fish soup garnished with oak smoked haddock, main courses, roast chicken, half of the table. That's down to you guys. Make Push it. the chicken. Traditional roast beef. With Yorkshire pudding. Yorkshire pudding. A la Hervé. Oh, Hervé. Price, what do you think this time last week? We went from two. To 180 for lunch today. So I'm gonna be in the dining room, right behind them, give them a little bit of support. Because I think the kitchen's pretty much set, we're there, but the dining room's still a little bit apprehensive. Bookings have been staggered over two sittings, so we'll be working for six hours straight. Use this one for the peas. After Zach's performance with the chowder, I've put him on bar duty. You want to die, okay? Kim, Nick, Richard and Peter will be working the floor. And he's in charge of the kitchen with Hervé as his right hand man. You got three minutes, Hervé, yeah? How many is it? Four. How many is the chicken? Four, four. And the executive four. chef? Well, yeah, he's in charge of crockery. Okay, you've got three chow bowls up there. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Homemade wall place burger. It's a thick beef burger with a charred grilled bun. And it tastes brilliant. It will do Nick the world of good to meet some customers. The burgers are selling well, but. At the moment, not enough chicken. Just two or three of you want the chicken, and we'll bring it out to your table and call it for you at the table. How come you're not selling the chicken, huh? It's not one to try. Go on, we want to go for a break. <laughs> <laughs> they actually sell one chicken. The rest of the dining room will start to see sort of a little bit of excitement, a little bit of magic happening around the table. So they'll all start ordering, which then, within an hour, will run out, which is exactly what we need. Now there's a nice buzz coming out of the room. It sounds really happy. Here he comes. Give it to me. Four me. chicken. Chicken for four. Mm -hmm. Well done, big boy. Four roast chicken. After all my doubts, it's Peter who sold the first chicken. Bring chicken. Well, that's not you then. Sure enough, soon everyone wants one. It's a mutant chicken. Oh, my goodness me. What's the idea of doing it at the table? Yeah. 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 How do you feel about having a chicken car on the table? The 
difference? Makes you feel a bit more hungry. Well, I find the knuckle. Right, think of the drumstick. Well, what's that bit? I've never seen that bit before. Do you want a bit of each? Yeah, that's fine. Relax, it's only a chicken. Everybody's rising to the occasion, and the first sitting's going really well. It's great to see the dining room full and feel the buzz. Oh, thank you so much. Lovely. But on the second sitting, the overbooking's causing a problem. There are just too many people. There's a table of 19 and a table of 15 and a 14, pretty much coming at the same time. And it's not very good when you've got, like, 48 people all at once because it's shafty the kitchen. <laughs> Nick and Richard have to learn a cardinal rule. Put the customers first, make them feel really special, and build a sense of loyalty. I don't expect to come out for a family meal and have to wait as long as this. It's not a question of fast food, it's a question now we've been here an hour and a half and we've got a starter. That's it. Not a lot of explanation other than we've been really busy. Yeah. <laughs> we've kept cheerful, haven't we? Except for Colin. Still, there we are, we learn and we don't come back again. That's it. <laughs> Have you ever had a chicken carved at your table? No. Well, I've not done this many times either. Kim's trying her best, but charming the customers just won't work. They want to eat. At least you know it's fresh, though. Yeah. <laughs> another bottle we'll of wine. Another, another bottle of wine, please. Remember, unhappy customers destroy reputations. I mean, how the fuck can you cook for nearly 50 people at one time? Yeah? The food was very good. Yeah. The rest of it, the it's structure, the organisation. I'm oh, sorry, mate, you know, it doesn't happen. Perhaps some more waiting staff. The pop, I mean, the girl's the girl. done her best, yeah, but, you know, yeah. she's yeah. the yeah. only one on her own. The guys in the black shirts and yeah. everything that were the managers, yeah. they were sitting down talking to their mates in the conservatory there, and they only left two people serving everybody else in oh, really? here. I'd like to say goodbye, <laughs> but <laughs> we're still waiting, we're still waiting <laughs> to pay the bill. Let's hope Richard and Nick learn their lesson. The dining room's empty now, but it's been full for the first time in a long time, and the vast majority of customers went away happy. One chicken left. OK, Evie. Bravo. Well done. Thank you. Yes? Happy? Yeah, it's good working with Andy. Yeah? Will you use my recipe for Yorkshire puddings? But I'm a bloody French. I know you're the bloody York. French. I, I know. Don't do Yorkshire for this. Don't know why you're for the last minute. Thank you, everyone's match. Yeah? Yeah? Oh, no, come on. We've got to the end of the day. We've got to have some fisty cuss before no, it goes. Everyone performed in the kitchen. Even Mark. It wouldn't be right. It's an easy target at the end of the day. Oh, Mark's not an easy target. Yeah, I am. You know, you said earlier, didn't you? You've got a lot of material to work with. I just love it when you put that executive chef before your name. Hey, did I? Hey. Did I? And the waiters did a great job. I'm really impressed with the way everyone pulled together. That was fantastic. And you were running around crazy today, like proud cock. Wow, this is full. <laughs> this is heaving, this is buzzing. Right. Hey, I'm running Both it. And happy as Larry. Since we started, we've never had a day like we've had today in here. And do you know what? A quarter to 12, lunchtime, I didn't think you were going to do it. Because I didn't think any of you were good enough to do it. One complaint was the fact that the food was taking too long. And the rest of the complaints were just customers arriving again. Still not happy with that bloody colour. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that purple monstrosity. Huh? <laughs> Let's hope we put more plays back on the map. <laughs> when I first arrived at More Place, I found a restaurant in crisis. Where is everybody? It felt more like a rest home. Today, how many booked for lunch? None. Nothing. The food was deep fried, microwaved, or out of a packet. That's fucking 70s crap at its best. Too many cooks, and not one of them any good. Are they? Thank fuck I'm not hungry. And I met possibly the worst waiter in the world. Oh, Zach, I'm fucked. I mean, really fucking shocking. But by the end of the week, things had started to improve. Now, I'm back to see what's changed. It's still purple. 
Apart from the horrible colour, my biggest problem was with the executive chef. I couldn't see the point. You put weight on. Was that actually a dish of a stone actually? And you're not wearing a chef jacket. That's even better news. But at least he's staying out of the kitchen. Get hold of Andy. Missing you already. Yeah, right. It's the first day of Andy's new menu. Morning, guys. Sean, Hervé, how are you? Still happy as ever, miserable fucker. How are you? <laughs> you well? Andy, how are you? Yeah, very good, thanks. How many new dishes you got going on tonight? Chicken marinade. Six starters. The baked yeah, well, I've taken some of your ideas uh -huh. and added some of my own ideas as well. But good. yeah, it's got the, the haddock chowder, the ward off cellar that we've done on Mother's mm -hmm. Day. The burger, how's that going? Yeah, it's going very well. Very uh -huh. well. Please. Oh, here he is. What the choice of potato? You got mashed potato and chips only. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Don't start bringing in your sautéed potatoes and stuff like that, Peter. That is all the veg there is. In all the 15 years he's worked here, Peter's never himself. seen so many changes. Peter, still good to see you being the ultimate pain in the ass. These look nice. Christ almighty. Nice little um, apple tarts. Do you want if I taste one? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Help yourself. How much do they cost to make? Pound? Yeah, if that. Peter, apple tart. Mm. Crispy. I hope he can taste the difference in the fresh food. Mm. Delicious. Mm. Isn't that better than that frozen shit they used Absolutely, to serve a month yeah. ago? Mm. Lovely. This place just not only looks different, but it smells different. Do you think so? Yeah, yeah, it just smells sort of fresh. Fresh, yeah. yeah. The front's still purple. <laughs> yeah, well, Ren wasn't built in a day, was it? <laughs> well, that's true, that's true. Then. Are the staff causing any problems? Hervé. He's, he seems to be working out all right. He's a bit negative, but once you show him how to do something and see, you get him on your way of thinking, yeah. then uh, yeah. he can see the improvements. Have you bollocked Mark yet? Yeah, today. Oh, good. <laughs> How's Zach doing? Smoke had a chowder. Look at him over there. Give it to me. Sell it to me. If I remember it correctly, it's a, it's a creamy fish shoot garnished with the flakes of oaked haddock and a nice quail egg in the middle. My God, he can do it. Let's hope Andy doesn't change the menu too soon. Thanks, Zach. OK, new menu, a new start. Andy's exactly what this place needs. Uh, more place burger. We have um, seared salmon, and it's on a champ mash. He cooked for 181 guests on Mother's Day, and everyone went away happy apart from a table of 19. I hope Richard and Nick have learned from that. It's all twos, threes, fours, sixes. There's no 19s or anything like that. It's all nice, good, easy stuff. Uh, 27. Whether there's 20 customers or 200, the service has got to match the food. Let's keep it nice for tonight. One last thing. It really breaks my heart when uh, I've put sauce and everything on the plate and the waiters come along and they throw all the plates up their arms. See if the sauce is nice and thick, but... I mean, so sometimes the sauce it's before. It's not a burner year. It's not like a gravy. No thick sauces. There's no parsley. There are no tomatoes. Pizza. Pizza. Thicken them no, all up with a bit of cornflour. Not a fucking burner in. No. Two chicken Marylands, one French fries, one veg. Thank you. We've got a new um, head chef who started about four weeks ago. Hopefully, he'll stay. It's good to see Nick engaging with customers. I'll try my best. <laughs> Andy, what do you recommend I have for dinner? I quite like the lamb. I like the sign of the um, salmon as well. Special. Yeah. Have we sold any yet? Yeah, we sold, uh, sold three. Thank you. Uh, yeah. 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 The waiters look like they're enjoying their jobs and getting excited about the new food. Service! Nice buzz tonight. Yeah. Yeah, really nice buzz. Presentation looks nice. Yeah. It's simple, unfussy. I've never been a big fan of fried leeks, but that's a garnish. Are you both happy so far with the sort of, not American restaurant, but the theme side to the food? Happy, yes. Yeah. Um, I'd love to see far more bums on seats. I think the, the biggest thing for me has been we've actually got someone in the kitchen that cares as much as we do about the yeah. business. The, the staff said on Sunday it was probably the first time they'd ever taken food out that they knew wasn't coming back. Yeah. The are a knockout. Thanks, Kim. They've got a real asset in Andy. We never ever pretended to be restaurateurs, we're not. You two guys uh, uh, that, that have got the potential to go all the way, providing you remove yourself from the best mate scenario with the staff and start tightening the screws a little bit. You guys are smart, Kim's smart. Then I get Friar Tuck walking in with a fucking scruffy t shirt on and a pair of jeans. Look at him now at that table. Just, you know, even if you just send him upstairs and say, look, fuck off out of here, go and get a shirt on because you do look like a sack of shit. I'm totally in agreement with you. 
This is about discipline, Richard, and it's very hard to implement discipline when you're so close to these guys. The ration's not full every night, but turnover is already up 20%. Superb. Thank you. 100 guests going through a day, six days a week, turning you know, 18, 20 grand a week alone. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I swear to God, you guys have got a fucking gold mine on your hands. Can I just show you one more thing? I know, don't, don't. No, no, no I want to show no, you how no, to no. play fucking golf. <laughs> oh, just the one more thing. <laughs> Would you like me to put some clim film on the pond so when it splashes in there, we don't hear it? Thank you. Come on. It's great to see the dining room busy and the restaurant making money at last. If Nick and Richard can attract as many customers as they get on their golf course, then more place can be a big success. I didn't know they were going to be so bright like that. So you can actually see them whiz through the air. Do they float? We'll <laughs> <laughs> <Let's> see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've gone one left. Fucking hell. And that was a fucking shit shot. Yeah, well, I've played a lot worse. <laughs> and do you know what? It's like me inviting you to my restaurant and fucking your omelette. <laughs> That's what it's like. <laughs> Pringle pants, Pringle socks, Pringle jumper. All the gear. Pringle glove, all the gear. No idea. And no fucking bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Beautiful. <laughs>